me. Oh. Shout out to the OGs, Donnie Carr, Marcus Green, Harry Allen, Tyreek Evans, Kobe Bryant, Shaheen Holloway, Larry Kettner, Sad Eye Watson, Rashid Brooklyn Burrow, High to Heart, Chuck Grassy, The Legend, Wilt Chamberlain, John John Linehan, Zane Shaw, Benny Stewart, Billy Owens, Flip Murray, Buzz, Ah, uh, Blake Greer, Ah, uh, Hank Adams, the list goes on, Raw Sports, baby. It is now time for the boys game. The girls are over. You just saw what happened last year. All kinds of stuff going to happen here this afternoon, and it's already been going on for just about two hours. Welcome back to the Nike Public League Championships, everybody. I'm Carl Cherkin, along with Sonny Hill. Happy to join you? Well, I was over in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> we noticed, yes. We, we didn't think you were going to make it. Oh, people were talking to me, and they said, uh, Hey, Sonny, we need you. So I'm happy to be here, and uh, it's a real pleasure for me to be able to sit with you and uh, the people at Fox and be able to uh, give a little insight. Well, you are one of us today. Yeah. It's Gratz against Edison. Again, I'm Carl Cherkin, along with Sonny Hill. Now, we're talking about two schools here in Gratz and Edison, Sonny, that are separated by about a mile and a half of turf along Hunting Park Avenue. Edison at Front and Hunting Park, Gratz at 17th and Hunting Park. Talk a little bit about these two schools, their traditions, and the area, and the basketball they play down there. Well, let's talk about the tradition first. Okay. Gratz has the tradition now. Coach Ellaby has been at Gratz for the last... Uh, 13 years and he's established one of the rich traditions in Philadelphia public high school basketball and at Edison with uh, coach Ratnoff they have continued you didn't know I was gonna give you continued <laughs> a great legacy that started at Northeast High School at 8th and Lehigh and then when Northeast High School moved to the greater Northeast Cotman and Pennyway then what happened is that the tradition of that school carried on kind of dropped off a little bit mm -hmm. but with the new facility right. it has picked up again and that's why we have this competition which is a neighborhood rivalry mm -hmm. we play together we talk together but today we're on separate teams one's called Gratz and the other one is Edison okay we'll talk a little bit out too about West Philadelphia's dominance in recent years now it's North Philly's term we don't have time to talk about that right now, Sonny, but we will talk about that as we weave a lot of Philadelphia basketball throughout this broadcast this afternoon. We are back live at the Civic Center. I am Bill Perry alongside is Bark Narducci and Ted Soleri, two of the local high school basketball experts, and we will uh, preview today's upcoming boys championship game, Gratz and Walter Matthau. I'm sorry, I mean Edison. Light attempt at humor there. But Mark and Ted. Ted, you're going to break down Edison for us. Tell us what makes them very special. Edison is guard-driven. They have three of the better guards in the public league. All three of them can play point guard if necessary. David Wise usually does the job. But you'll see in tight situations, Omar Logan will come over and literally take the ball out of Wise's hands and want to run the offense. The other is Albert Crockett. The uh, one drawback for Edison is that the five starters are just about it. The bench is very thin. Are you at all surprised to see Edison in this championship game, Ted? Not when you beat Frankfurt in the regular season on the road and, uh, and do it in such impressive fashion. They had to hold on a little bit at the end, but they dominated the game for the most part, and that's why they're here in part. They gained a lot of confidence that day. All right, Ted Solari from the Philadelphia Daily News and Mark Narducci, you're going to talk to us a little bit about Gratz. This was supposed to be a wide-open year in Philadelphia high school basketball, and yet the perennial Gratz, they're right back in it. Well, Bill, uh, there's a perception that they're doing it with mirrors, <laughs> but they're really not. I mean, they have Marvin O'Connor, who might be the best junior in the Delaware Valley. Jared Kears, who's in the top five among the juniors. Those two guys are wing players, outstanding from the perimeter, and they're the guys that are going to supply the offense. Then Gratz comes off the bench, and they're very, very deep. They have about six guys who are 6'6". They're interchangeable parts. I thought Bill Ellerby against Frankfurt did one of the great coaching jobs of all time. 
getting his players in there. He had eight players play 10 or more minutes. There's a lot of depth on this team. And they buy into the Bill Ellerby philosophy, and they've been buying in for a lot of years. Why not? It's a successful program. Regardless of the uh, ability, the degree of talent, he makes his players play his way, and he has success with it. And, Bill, his way is defense. I don't think any team in the Delaware Valley plays better team defense than the Bulldogs. And, and Ted talked about how Edison is guard-driven. I think those guards are really going to be tested, but they do have the makeup to be able to handle the kind of pressure they'll see from Gratz. All right, guys, please hang in here with me. We'll get your predictions in a little bit. We're going to take it right now down to Don Tall. celebration of Philadelphia basketball about the storied history of the public league. It is a history that goes back to the entire 20th century, way back when it was Central High and West Philadelphia. They were the schools that dominated in the early years of this century. And then as we go to the middle of the century, it is the great runs at Overbrook and then on to West Philadelphia. And then more recently, we have talked a lot about the things that have gone on at Simon Gratz and at Frankfurt. And now today it is Gratz at Edison once more. This is all about public league basketball. Two schools that play serious baskets. He wants you to be a, uh, a great player. He teaches. He teaches. I mean, I think he knows more about basketball than anybody in the country. And uh, he teaches. He stresses going to class. He's, he's like a, a father a figure to us. And uh, he's, a, he's a great person. They come around and, uh, you know, when they come around, I make sure I introduce them and you know, and everything, and I, I, I don't let him forget the past. Rashid, he worked hard every, every, every time he came out. He worked hard, so I mean, I looked at him and I said, "Hey, you working hard? So he in the NBA? Why not me try to work hard and be like that?" Three of the starters played last year for Gratz. The rest of the team didn't. So you have three people with experience, but they were sophomores, and I'm sure they were really nervous last year. We've been in pressure games before. We've been in we've played in front of a crowd game real close time running out i think you know it's going to be a good game i had some doubts so whether we would work hard enough or whether everybody would be on the same page but as, as the season went on i said no doubt about it that we would be at the championship and that we'd, we'd win we developed the chemistry somehow that that has been lacking in a lot of teams that i've had that's my friend and everything we always talk each other about each other teams about yeah we are beat y'all here it is this is a show right here. Omar, my man, he's he cool. I mean, I can't tell him that we're going to beat him or, you know, we'll probably go back and forth if I call him this weekend. Yeah, we're going to beat y'all, you know, but it's nothing personal, you know what I'm saying? We, we don't get any personal feelings, but, but uh, I wish them the best of luck. You know, I hope they wish us the best of luck and we see him on Sunday. We are less than 10 minutes away from the opening tap. There is nothing like it. Philadelphia Public League basketball. The tradition goes way back to the Big Dipper. Will Chamberlain, Pooh Richardson, Lionel Simmons. Now it's Omar Logan and Marvin O'Connor's turn. We're going to have a great one. Edison and Gratz coming right at you, right here, right now on Fox. For three plus seasons, Sean Red Smith called the shots as Simon Gratz's point guard. Today, he's running the show as Speedy Morris's point man at LaSalle University. A starter, he's handing out six assists a game, and he knows how Gratz prepared him for Division I basketball. We played a busy schedule. We went to uh, a lot of tournaments. Uh, Mr. Ellerby and uh, Simon Gratz took me all over the world. I experienced a lot of things that I didn't see before. Um, it's a big change physically and mentally. Red Smith, you saw Lennart Stewart earlier, so gentlemen, we have a number of players playing uh, big-time collegiate basketball who have emerged from the public league, and uh, Ted, I wonder about the current class, the current crop of players. Has it been a good year? Do we have a lot of Division I prospects? A lot of the best prospects in the city this year are guards or swingmen, and it's fitting in today's championship game. The three best players in Edison are guards, and probably the three best players on Gratz are guards also. Ronald Campbell come, come off the bench very early. He's a very talented point guard, so it's a very guard-heavy league this year, but a lot of talent. Mark? Uh, Bill, I think the exciting thing about the public league, we talked about O'Connor and Kierce. Uh, there's also Lynn Greer at Engineering and Science, who's a junior. I really like the junior class. I think they're coming up, and as Ted said, it's a real guard-heavy uh, area. Of course, Arthur Davis of Frankfurt, probably the best prospect, as physically strong a guard as you're going to see in the Delaware Valley. All right, in the girls' championship game, we saw our first-timer, Masterman, lose 68-46 at the perennial University City. Well, in this boys' matchup, we have another perennial, of course, 
Gratz making their eighth consecutive performance. Can Edison Ted get it done? It is prediction time. My prediction is Gratz. Edison does not have enough of a bench to get it done over the course of a long game with three refs where a lot of fouls can be called. One caution, however, in Chinese culture, this is the year of the rat. Edison coach Howard Ratnop, all the kids call him Rat. That's his nickname. Keep that in mind. Very nice, Mark. Well, Bill, I don't know about Chinese culture, but I do know that Gratz, I think, can wear them down because they're a lot deeper team. Edison must shoot from the perimeter. They didn't have to against FLC because they got a lot of easy baskets because of their penetration. They did get eight threes earlier in the year against Frankfurt, so they have to hit from the outside to stay with it, but I like Gratz. All right. Mark? Teddy, Walter Matthau has called, and he does like Edison, so we do have one pick for Edison. Thank you, gentlemen. The boys' championship game is coming up. I'm Bill Perry, and we'll be back. Welcome back to the Nike Public League Championships here at the Civic Center. I'm Carl Churkin, along with Sonny Hill, as we take a look at the Ford keys to victory for first Thomas Edison High School. Sonny? Well, I think the strength for Thomas Edison is in their guard play, and what you have to do is to be concerned about uh, Logan, you're going to have to be concerned about Crockett. You're going to have to be concerned about Wise because they have the ability to be able to not only shoot the ball and penetrate from outside, but they also have the ability to break up the pressure that Gratz would want to put on. And how about for those Bulldogs of Simon Gratz? I think the key for Simon Gratz is first coach Bill Ellaby and the fact that he's brought this great tradition. And the second thing is that they've got so many players and the players are multi-dimensional and he can use different combinations to do different things. Well, these kids are friends. They're neighborhood kids. They play against each other as you see them all wishing one another good luck, but not too much as we get ready well, to go. Well, when you get into the neighborhood thing, what you're talking about now is a rivalry. Both of these teams should be pretty confident because they know one, no one another. Familiarity is right out there. Look at this. Right at us. Tariq Gosley and Mark Peterson jumping up. That's Omar Logan off the window. Cleared by Terrence Smith. We will introduce you to these kids, talk about them individually as we go along. That's Marvin O'Connor with the basketball number 11. Three is Jared Kears. The thing you notice right away, uh, Edison throws up a shot right away. Edison comes down. I mean, Gretz comes down and takes his time to get his offense off. Kears with the miss. David Wise on the run. A little bit out of control. And we'll go back the other way. Two times. Two times we've seen them come down the floor, out of control, take the first shot. First time down for Gratz. They run their set. Let's look at the lineups. Forrest, Peterson, Wise, Crockett, and Logan for Edison. Gratz really has a four-guard offense at times, as do both teams. Smith, Gosley, De Virgilio, Pierce, and Smith for the Bulldogs. Out of bounds against Gratz. 45 seconds in, we're still scoreless. Edison with the basketball. Now, this is the pressure that Gratz wants to apply, but this is where the three guards should work very well for Edison. They break the pressure. Logan with the basketball. The Forrest and Crockett off the front rim. Pierce. Marvin O'Connor with the miss. Cleared by Mark Peterson. He's number 25. No, uh, both of these ball clubs right now are playing with a lot of enthusiasm. They're not tentative, but they're playing very, very uh, out of control because of the emotional aspect. Logan with the penetration in the dish. Referee Tommy DeFelice calls a jump ball. The arrow pointing towards the Gratz Bulldogs, and they will inbound it. Going right to left on your screen, both teams have combined 0 for 5 in the first minute and a half. And Edison likes to use a trap. They're going to come out and try to stop the ball, use the quickness that they have to try to offset. O'Connor with the pump fake in the paint, and there's our first two points of the game, Marvin O'Connor. Gratz leads it 2-0. Logan turns it over. Fourth time down the floor, and again we see Edison trying to be too assertive in what they're doing, and they're getting the offense off too quick. They need to slow it down a little bit, put the second and third pass into the game. You saw a brief shot of head coach Bill Ellerby looking resplendent in his blue blazer today. O'Connor with the shot again. And the bucket scored 29 in the semifinal win last week. Marvin O'Connor being recruited by, among others, the University of Pennsylvania. 
and Stanford. An outstanding player, only a junior, and an outstanding student as well. That's Tariq Gosley, the freshman center at 6'8". O'Connor on the breakout. Pulls it back. That's Pierce. That's two points. And even when Gratz comes up the floor and run their offense quick, they still seem to be under control and know where one another is. Logan taking it to the hole, and he's fouled. As it comes into the basket, what happens, Logan is uh, coming to the basket very, very strong. Defense for Gratz in terms of Smith, he steps up, and that's what you have to do. You have to be able to step up, take that position away on the floor. Well, the guy who took it away there was a freshman, six foot eight of them, Tariq Gosley. Bill Ellerby told us earlier, he says, the kid has felt all along that he's not sure he quite belongs, but Coach Ellerby and everybody at Gratz thinks this kid could be the next true superstar to come out of there, and it could happen any day. That's why he starts. <laughs> well, the key is, he does not need the ball. When you have as many talented players as Coach Ellerby has on Gratz, you need role players. He's willing to be a role player. That's important. And that was one of them going up and getting that rebound, Perry D. Virgilio. An honor roll student, a kid who's been getting some Division I play recently, more likely will wind up a Division II player. As O'Connor hits his first three. 9-0. I'm sorry, 9-1. Gratz leads it. 5.05 remaining in the first quarter. Logan pulls up and misses. O'Connor with the rebound, knocked out of bounds. And right in front of us, Terrence Fat Smith just went down. It looked like his leg just gave out. He slipped on the basketball uh, floor right in front of us. He hit a wet spot on the floor, went down. His knee hit the floor real hard. Let's just hope it's a bump and not something that's pulled or torn. That is Terrence Fat Smith, a senior point guard. Let's reset for you now. 4.59 remaining in the first period. Gratz leading 9-1 to one in their senior leadership. It was a bump. Yeah. Well, see, when you're young, you can bounce back. Old guy like you, if you fall down yeah, like I that, I wouldn't know anything over. about and being me, young. for me, I wouldn't even get up. Fat <laughs> <laughs> Smith has a seat next to Coach Ellerby. And the referees are taking a look at what happened here. They're gonna take up the, uh, unfortunately for us, the Nike sign. And uh, I think what happened is when uh, Smith hit that sign, he slipped and it looks like they wanna take that sign up. Now the other thing that you wanna look at when you're looking at a ball game like this, the emotionalism of the, of the two teams. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that Gratz with his experience is able to take its emotion and kind of channel it down, although both clubs early were emotional. Mm -hmm. The Edison team, which has not had as much exposure and experience, they're playing on high emotion. The adrenaline is really flowing with them, so you have not seen Edison come down the floor on any of their sets with any continuity. Conversely, Gratz has been able to come down the floor the last three or four times, and their offense has executed very well. Well, Edison likely will calm down, but we were both a bit surprised when head coach Howie Ratnoff came in early. He said he wanted his fight nows to run. I guess he figures against a team that was not only bigger but much more experienced, the, the guy that they affectionately refer to as Mr. Rat, he figured that was his best chance to win if he could get some quick baskets, if he could get the breakouts going and convert then Bill Ellerby's Bulldogs would be back playing his game. Well, when Coach Ratnoff said that, you notice I said, you mean you're not going to slow it down and play? <laughs> he said, well, uh, we can play half court. What I was concerned about is the fact that with Gratz's depth, mm -hmm. with Gratz High School's balance, and with the way that Coach Ellerby runs his ball club, if you run up and down the floor and you don't score, which we've seen early right. in the ball game with Edison, you leave yourself open 
for Gretz to be able to go down the floor, execute on the inside where we've seen him get a field goal, and then certainly Marvin O'Connor from outside with that lethal jump shot of his. So Gratz has a lot of different weapons and a lot of different ways to attack you, and you just don't want to leave that door open by going down the floor, being out of control sometimes, shoot the ball quick, and leave yourself vulnerable. Well, see, if, if you've just joined us, let us reset for you. We've got a little bit of time here as you take a look at the Thomas Edison cheerleaders. 4.59 remaining in the first period. Edison trails Gratz 9-1. to one. Apparently, Terrence Fat Smith did in fact trip over a raised portion of the Nike swoosh emblem on the court. And there has been a delay he here. Trip. He slid. It's like, it's like an old guy who comes down and he trips on the half court line because he can't get his feet over. But really what happened was he hit that Nike switch and uh, what happened, he slid. And as you said, he, he banged his knee. So they feel they want to take that off. All right, we'll get back to action in just a brief moment. We're going to step aside here for a little break. We'll come back. Welcome back to the Nike Public League Championships. I'm Carl Churkin along with Sonny Hill, John Miller roaming the sidelines as well here in the Civic Center. Marvin O'Connor, three for three for Gratz, including a three-pointer, a total of seven points. Nine to one is the score right now. As you can see in the left-hand side of your screen, they are cleaning off that Nike swoosh with either some steel wool or some sandpaper to try and smooth it over. Apparently, Terrence Smith did, in fact, trip over it on the way down. He plays for Gratz, number four, and they are just making sure that everybody is safe and sound out there. So. Well, that's what you have to do. You have these young people there. Their careers are certainly on the line, and if you have a situation where you have a slick spot on the floor, or in this day and age, the emblems that are put on the floor, right. you have to make sure that those are things that the players will not slip on, slide on, or do anything that could create some damage. All right, well, we could speculate all we want from over here, but let's go over to John Miller, who will tell us more about what's going on on the court. John? All right, Carl and Sonny, I'm with Linda McGee from the school district, and Linda, tell us the inside story and what's going on here. Well, the swooshes that were applied to the floor are a little bit slippery, and we don't want anybody to get hurt, so we send the maintenance people for some sandpaper to rough up the surface so that uh, kids' sneakers adhere better to the surface as they run past. Any idea what kind of a delay we're talking about? Looks like they're just about finished. Right, just a couple more minutes, just enough to rough it up so that they uh, get better traction as they run by on the floor. All right, just kind of a freak thing. Fat Smith is okay, we're told, just a bump on his knee. They just want to play it safe. Back to Carl and Sonny. Go ahead, Sonny. One of the things that I would be concerned about, Carl, is that with this delay, Gratz had a nice run going. Mm -hmm. Will this delay work in favor of Gratz so they can continue to be aggressive and assertive in what they're doing? Or will the delay calm Edison down? Will it give Coach Rat Ratnoff an opportunity to say to this ball club, I want you to run, but I don't want you to run and be out of control, as you said. Well, both teams have gone back in their huddles. They've come out. Let's set the referees for you, Tommy DeFelice, Howard Wilson, and Frank Breslin, your referees here this afternoon at the Civic Center. Howie Ratnoff, very concerned. At, at this point, his team is down eight points, just about three minutes in. And Smith is sitting on the bench, and I'm not too sure how good that is, because if you bump his leg, and you sit down, and you dry off, and the blood stops flowing at the same rate that it was when you're running up and down the floor, you could stiffen up a little bit. So we want to watch Smith. Wise penetrates, and that's the first bucket for Edison, with 4.50 remaining here in the first quarter. This is the Boys Public League Championship coming to you live here on Fox Philadelphia. Now, Edison has changed from a zone to man-to-man -to -man during that timeout. O'Connor with Steve Virgilio's miss twice, had it knocked back down. Tyrone Forrest applying the defense wide, switches from the right to the left, misses the layup. Out of bounds will go back the other way with the Bulldogs. Let me go back to the defensive switch by Coach Ratnoff. The reason he went to the switch was the Gretz team, Marvin O'Connor in particular, had found a sweet spot. On this fast break here, just not able to finish that play. Should have took it to the rack a little stronger. Perhaps a little bump there by Gosley, but no foul. Little bump. See, you I said little back, bump. If you take it to the rack strong, <laughs> right. you get a big bump, That's right. and you get three sometimes. Ronald Campbell triggers it 
to Gosley, and now this is Jared Kears setting it up. And they're into the man-to-man -man again, so it looks like Edison wants to play man-to-man. -man. That's a freshman, folks. 15 years old, Tariq Gosley, an honor roll student. And an 11-3 Gratz lead. Tyrone Forrest with the miss. Gratz wants to run this time. Campbell from the corner. Draws iron, but it's no good. Forrest to Logan. Setting it up at the point. Mark Peterson with the follow and the bucket. If you're not shooting good outside, which is what Edison is doing, they need to get some second shots. Peterson comes up with a good, strong offensive rebound, but takes it back to the basket real strong to score. 11-5 the count as Pierce tries to break his man down and does. Pulls it back out for O'Connor. And he Keyword. resets. Keyword for Brett. Pulled it back out. That's what they like to do to run their offense. Logan puts it down on his teammate's foot. Still controls to Crockett. Crockett to Wise. Inside to Forrest. And he's fouled. But things have settled down a little bit here now. 11 to 5. Edison with a chance to shoot two here, Sonny, as we take another look. Now watch Crockett, and there's a nice pass inside. Good, strong rebound, I mean, good, strong offensive move to the basket. And that's what I was saying last time. When you take it to the rack strong, you put yourself in a position where you can pick up the foul, and that's what's happening. The Edison kids, as the Gratz kids are to Coach Bill Ellerby, are very responsive to, to Howie Ratnoff's teachings. They wanted to run early. All right, maybe it didn't work, maybe it did. So you pull it out a little bit now and set it up, but we saw the first evidence that on that previous sequence. Pierce for Gratz. See, Gratz get the second pass, they get the third pass. They look to probe the defense as opposed to Edison early, just coming down and shooting. Steve Virgilio misses badly from the low post. And Edison will bring it back. Also, Edison, I mean, Al Gratz has an inside out. They throw the ball inside to their low post guys, let them get some shots, open up the outside a little bit more. Edison with, the, with trouble on the trap. Campbell with the steal. Almost had himself a three-point play. Now, with the guard play for Edison, they can't afford to turn the ball over. If you turn the ball over and you're not shooting well, you just create more problems. Logan makes a bad pass, just a good defense to play, and then again, a strong move to the basket, forcing the defense to foul. First time Gratz threw the zone trap at him on that play. Results in a turnover, already one point with a chance to make it two now for Ronald Campbell. And Ken, when Campbell's in, Curse moves down to a more forward position. Campbell becomes the lead guard. He has more quickness. He can penetrate and get inside the defense better. And Coach Ellerby said Ronald Campbell lights it up in the summer league, scores 30, 40, 50 routinely. Another turnover. Here he's unselfish. Connor. O'Connor offensive foul. Yes. Out of control a little bit, trying to do too much. Step off a little bit, let everything form. Gratz that time made a good defensive play, but then they gave it right back by being out of control. So this is the this is the eighth straight year that Gratz has been in this game. They've won four of the seven times they've been here. I remember Marvin O'Connor as a freshman, spindly little legs. Now he's grown into a man. And we've still got another year to go. Crockett with the basket. Now what? What Edison has to do is not panic when the pressure comes. This is where your three guards should work to your advantage, and Crockett made a nice shot that time. Well, Albert Crockett has been in this Edison program for four years. Coach Rat said he never envisioned the kid would be this good. He was a five foot seven inch freshman. He's now grown into a six foot two inch division one prospect. And he probably will grow a little bit more and he's got a nice basketball body. He's got long arms, he's got long legs. That's a good basketball body. Shati Cooks in the lineup now, number 21. Gets the ball, gets the ball up to the rack and gets fouled. Cook. Cooks is a good, strong player inside. And I talked earlier about Gratz 
getting the ball inside. They get the ball inside the Cooks, and again, notice, he takes the ball to the teeth of defense, forcing the defense to foul him, and also forcing the referees to see the foul. Foul shooting is big. Off the back of the iron, he has another chance. Shatik Cooks, a 6'6", 220-pound junior. That makes it 14-7. Again, pressure by Gratz. Mark Peterson comes back to help. Crockett holds and sets. Now, see, Edison wanted to attack. But Gratz did a great job, but after the press was broken, they got back to set their defense up and would not give Edison a chance to get an easy shot. Crockett from very, very deep. <laughs> Little impatient once again. Smith's back in the ball game. We were concerned about him. It looks like he's okay. He's running real well after that ball. Arthur Dorsey on the baseline, turn around off the glass and no good. Logan behind his back to hear the oohs and the ahs, but Gratz back on defense. David Wise driving, drawing two free throws. Well, Edison again is at most getting the second pass. If they got the third or even the fourth pass, you would put defense in a position where they wouldn't have a chance to be where you are. Here it is right here. Notice the second pass. Three Gratz players right there. You drop that pass off, you get an open player. Howie Ratnoff, you saw him briefly looking down, trying to thought there was a foul on the, a shooting foul on the play. Did not get it. And Curse looks up and says, hey, fellas, it's only 35 seconds. Let's look for the last shot. That's the kind of intelligence the Gratz program has under Bill Ellaby. Incredible. In the midst of an incredible run, Smith, Smith fell, fell down again. again. That must be that line you were talking about he tripped over because there was no Nike switch there. <laughs> 15 seconds as you count down with this. Campbell. Broken away by Albert Crockett, taking it to the hole. And he's fouled by Dorsey. Good, strong move by Crockett, taking it to the hole strong, but a poor decision by uh, Gratz because what happened, you had just said 15 seconds, and you don't want to attack the basket until you get about eight or nine seconds, so you get the last shot, and you don't give the Edison team a chance to get a shot off. This could work to help to get Edison back in the ball game if Crockett can make the two foul shots. Edison one for four from the free throw line thus far. That's now one for five. Logan, their high score, 0 for two and two turnovers. Well, here again, nice strong move, takes it to the basket strong, gets the foul, and he's at the foul line for the second shot. Missed both of them. Crockett throwing it out of control. There's another kid going down. That's Jared Kearse. That's the end of the first quarter as Bill Ellerby comes out and wants to know what's going on here. His team leads it 14 to 7 here at the end of the first quarter. We'll be back with more of the Nike Public League Championships right after this brief timeout. Welcome back to the Civic Center. I'm Carl Churkin along with Sonny Hill. And here's Terrence Fat Smith going down for the second time in the ballgame. Yeah, but you can't blame this one on the Nike switch. <laughs> that is either a situation where you are so excited about playing that you've cut so quick that your sneaks give out. That happens because that shortened Doug Collins' career. Mm -hmm. Doug Collins used to stop on a dime and his ankles couldn't hold it. Uh, in the first quarter of the ball game, Marvin O'Connor with seven points. Three players for Edison have two each. Wise, Crockett, and Peterson. Now you see Edison coming out more patiently than they were before. It's off Forrest. Nice play there by that Gratz defense. I think Shatee Cooks knocked it off on number 21. Edison wanted to be more patient that time, but keep in mind, folks, that although Gratz isn't real big, their tallest player is, he's one of them, Shatik Cooks, as he makes the bucket. 6'6", most of them. They have one 6'8", who's now out of the ball game. But they got five guys who are 6'4", 6'5". Well, that makes up for having one big guy right. 6'7", or 6'8", and they have a light, lot of uh, balance on their ball club. Forrest with the follow, can't make it. Wise, the smallest man on the court, puts it back up. Doesn't get it, but this time he will get those two free throws. Edison is playing with a frenzy, and we're going to see that frenzy in the replay. Wise comes to the basket, drops off a nice pass. 
and now we see all of the frenzy on the inside. Now the emotionalism takes over as Wise goes up for an offensive uh, shot. He's fouled. He's at the foul line. Edison now two for seven from the free throw line here in the first half. Thank you very much, Mr. Rim. He hits both. David Wise with a couple more points. LaSalle 16. LaSalle, I'm looking at the I know. <laughs> it's Grat 16. And Edison 9. As Shatik Cooks hits again. Notice how easy Gratz gets into his offense and gets good high percentage shots. Edison on the other side takes difficult shots. Turnover. Campbell takes it away to Kearse. Backs up for the three and hits it. Jared Kearse, one of those 6'5 point guards. That's one of those shots you say, oh, no, no, no. Oh, yes, great play. <laughs> More pressure now as the Gratz Bulldogs, who beat Frankfurt 66-64 in the semifinals. Frankfurt was the odds-on favorite coming into the season. A great team but was outplayed in the semis by a let true me, team. Let me go back to that shot by Jared Kirk. Comes out on the fast break. We had seen the uh, Gretz team take their time, get the second and third pass. He took a quick one. That sometimes says, good foul shot, the first one. That sometimes said, I need to get a shot off. And here it is right here on the replay. See, they set up to take that shot a little quicker than what Coach Ellaby would like. But when it goes, you say, great play. <laughs> Mark Peterson hits two. Edison now trails 21-11. Edison is coming out with full court pressure now. Little indecision there. Referees finally got their act together and made the call. Let's talk about the defenses that uh, Howie Ratnoff, the coach of Edison, has set up so far. Came out with his matchup zone. It didn't work the way he wanted. Went to half-court man-to-man, and now it's going to full-court man-to-man to see if his defense can set up some offense to get some easy baskets. Campbell to Kearse, back to Campbell, and over to Fat Smith. Shaquille ah. Cooks picks it up in the paint. He can't make it. Logan brings it out for Edison. On the wing to Crockett, he can't get it. Forrest with the rebound. Forrest misses, gets his own rebound. Looks like he got hammered, but no call. Smith looking for Campbell down the other end, but a lovely play there by David Wise to get back on defense and make the steal. Edison is coming up with offensive rebounds, two and three of them out of crack, but they can't finish the play. Omar Logan, truly the star of this Edison team throughout the season, plays like he's nervous. He's got one point and four turnovers in the first quarter and a half. They expect and need more than that from Omar Logan, number 21. Good defense by the Edison team, hoping that the defense can generate some offense. Their problem is making the second and third pass. It looks like they want to take a little more time with this set. Edison, 3 of 17 thus far, with 5-12 remaining in the second quarter. They trail by 10. If they were just shooting anything like what they shot in the semis, I mean, they were 8 of 10 from three-point land in the semifinals. They must be very nervous. When you talk about, here's a nice play here, going inside. See, the defense reached out. If they had not reached out, it probably would have been a traveling play. They're in the bonus. Got the power line. Tyrone Forrest misses the front end of the one and one. And Rasheem Sims is now in the ball game. That's him with the ball. A six foot sophomore point guard, honor roll student. And in the words of Bill Ellerby, even though he's a sophomore, he knows exactly what he's going to get every time this kid comes out on the floor. A steady, intelligent player. He's a player who is accepting his role as a young player and will grow with this grass program. Kennedy also in for the first time, number 25, a transfer from Roxborough, who, as Coach L told us, can jump out of this world. There was some evidence of it. And has long arms. Forrest with the pump fake and the bucket. Patience that time got in the bucket. Head fake, defense went by, sat down on the jump shot, 
They just need to calm down. Exactly. They still are in the ball game. 4-17, 23-13 in the second quarter. There's enough time. Smith draws iron. No basket. As Campbell takes it back down. This is Logan. This is Tyrone Forrest again with the fake. And the foul. Twenty-three thirteen, the score, Gratz leading Edison. As Tyrone Forrest heads to the free throw line. And this is another way. Here's the play right here. Forrest. Here's a nice pass, a third pass. Now what he does, he shows the jump shot, which he made last time, goes to the basket, but they're missing the foul shot. Edison, if they want to get back in the ball game, get back in the ball game by making their foul shot. Something they have absolutely not done here for the first quarter and a half, Sonny. And they've had a lot of foul shots already with three minutes and 55 seconds to go in the second quarter. They're already to the foul line for the bonus. Now Bill Ellerby plays an awful lot of players, but Dorsey and Campbell, number 33 and number 13 each with three fouls apiece. Now Tyrone Forrest limps off. Coach Ratnoff, I believe, has brought in number 23, Reuben Palmer. Peterson is at the foul line and he shows a good stroke and it's amazing you make a few good plays foul shooting field goals your confidence moves and these two foul shots could help the confidence of the Edison high school team well Mark Peterson has been the only guy on the Edison team to hit his free throws he's got him back with an eight at 23 to 15 355 remaining in the second quarter we'll be back with more from the Civic Center right after this brief timeout Welcome back to the Civic Center. Eight-point Gratz lead as we head towards halftime. If you missed it earlier today, a dynasty continuing for the girls. University City winning its fourth straight title, 68 to 46. Shawnetta Stewart leading the way, 18 points and nine boards. For the Lady Jaguars, four in a row. Back for the conclusion of the first half of the boys game now with Carl Churkin in Sunny Hill. Shawnetta with that number 34 loves to call herself Baby Barkley. She is a Baby Barkley. <laughs> and she's going with Coach Vivian Stringer at Rutgers. And we're going to hear a lot about her. She's a special basketball talent. Not a girl or a woman talent, mm -hmm. a special basketball talent. Gratz patiently sets up the offense this time. Edison's back into the zone, so right. we've seen him play three different types of defense. Wise with the steal, he's got Logan. Logan hangs and draws the two free throws. Edison thus far seven for 13 from the free throw line, Sonny. And if it weren't for Mark Peterson going four for four, it'd be a lot worse. And Could be a lot better because they've missed the front end of the one on ones a lot. A good drop off pass. And then Logan takes the ball again to the chief of the defense. He was out of control. If the defense didn't attack him, it would have been a very difficult shot. But defense normally reacts in that way. And a smart player, and that's what Logan is, he picks up the foul shot. And it's contagious. Mm -hmm. Peterson makes two. And now Logan makes one. And the foul shooting can get the Edison team right back in the game. And it can also help him psychologically, Omar Logan, as David Wise comes and picks it clean. Omar Logan needs to get on from deep. He's a good three-point shooter. But cannot buy a bucket. So he didn't shoot that. He aimed that ball to the basket. He had to shoot it. Omar Logan caught an inadvertent elbow in the throat. Just now gets back into the defensive end. As Gratz scores two in the paint. Steve Kenny with the previous bucket to make it 25-16. As you can see, 3.02 remaining in the first half, Sonny. Now, see, Wise came up the floor. He saw the pressure. He tried to split the two men, but what he did was his dribble was too high. When you want to split two men, you want to put a baby dribble on it. We're going to see it on the replay. No, we're not going to see that play on the replay, but what you want to do is when he sees the double up and he wants to spit him, you put a baby dribble on it and then go through as opposed to the high dribble where the defense has a chance to take the ball. Fortunately for him, he was fouled. He's at the foul line and has that foul shooting again, Paul. Oh, this, this is a two-shot foul. That's brutal. Foul. That's brutal. Can't overcome it. Here's the play I'm talking about. Just before that, he was sticking the ball so you could notice that the ball was too high. He needs to put a little baby dribble on it to get through the two defensive players. This is Jared Kearse. 
Over to Sims. Looking for... This is Kyrie McKee, a relative of Aaron McKee's. Former Gratz player, went on to Temple, now the Portland Trailblazers. So the pedigree is there. Again, Coach Ellerby's got him in his system early, and he is very high on his future well. that's well. why Coach Ellerby's era at Gratz rivals the era of the Overbrook teams, the teams back in the early part of the 19th century, Central, Northeast, and then the West Philadelphia team that had great long runs. Logan cannot get free. He is now. Oh, see? His mindset's messed up. Right now, he's thinking the game. You can't think basketball. You have to react to what happens on the floor. He missed that last jump shot, and I told you he was aiming it. Mm -hmm. It was in his mind. He said, maybe I can get to the teeth of defense. Take what the floor gives you. Let me tell you about Omar Logan. Four turnovers, 0 for 5 from the field. He is a much better player, folks. It is a shame to see Omar Logan not being able to come up with a quality effort here thus far. He's still got another half to go. And almost two minutes in this half as well. Kenny underneath, Logan, he can't catch a break either. Yeah, he's nervous right now. Coach needs to set him down and give him a chance to think about a little bit. Nice pass over the top. See, but Omar Logan, even though he got the ball, the referees are trained that you have to call that because if you don't call it, the next time a player will throw an elbow. So over the top is almost like an automatic call. Omar Logan has scored over 900 points in his high school career. Didn't become a starter until last year. So this kid has really been filling it up all season long. You see him come out with this first half today. That's and Howie and Logan Ratnoff, is yeah. out of the game, and Moore is in, just as I said, and Coach Ratnoff is now talking to him because he knows he needs to calm him down. Gotcha. Say, hey, we got another half. We need you. Put the first half out your mind. Give me something in the second half. Ryan Moore, number 10, a little point guard for Edison in the game for the first time. A sophomore, only 5'6". He's a starting tailback on the football team. That's him with the ball. And he's a young player. My coach Rapp was telling him he's only, what, 15 years old? Played varsity football as a freshman at 13. <laughs> That's Mark Peterson drawing the free throws. 137 remaining. Edison, despite all the things that have gone wrong for them here in the first half, they are still very much in this ball game. Down just 10. A chance to hit two free throws here now for Mark Peterson. And this is where coaching comes in. And I want to applaud Coach Ratnoff for taking Omar Logan out. Let him kind of think about it a little bit. First foul shot is good by Peterson because what you want to do is calm your team down. Good play inside. Peterson recognizing that three Bratz players were running at him, turned around, forced him to foul him. He's at the foul line, and he made another. That's four in a row for Peterson at the foul line. That's eight in a row. He's eight for eight. At the foul line? I'm He's sorry, got eight four points. in a row. He's eight got eight points, points but That's... four in a row from the foul line. I say that because the team is shooting so bad from the foul line. 26-18 the score. Gratz leading. That's McKee. Missing. Current Smith. Knocked it out of bounds. It'll go back the other good way call. for Edison. The referees worked good on that. Both of them watched one another. It was clearly off of Gratz, and Edison has the ball. I like the way the referees made eye contact, to one another. and they recognized, hey, the outside official has a better view than I do. Let him make the call. Tyrone Forrest, who's knocked to the floor on that play, gets a seat, and Coach Ratnoff checking to see if he's okay. Just over a minute remaining. Edison within eight, and the basketball. Now with the subs on the floor, they're getting the third and fourth pass, so at least that's good for Edison, and that can calm your team down because it takes some of the emotionalism out of you. You still got Crockett, this man Wise, and Peterson in there. But David Palmer comes up limping. Well, that hurts. When you get that knee right in your thigh, and that's what happened. When Wise made the move on the baseline, he was so quick that the defense could not slide its feet. And then when the defense recognized that he was going by, it's a natural reaction for you to stick your leg out. And that's when he got kneed right in that thigh. And buddy, that hurts. And it's something that with the halftime coming up within 49 seconds, it could really be a factor in the second half for Wise. 
We'll talk about factors in the second half, too, Sonny. Three players for Gratz with three fouls apiece. Kennedy and Dorsey, both 6'6 guys, and Campbell. Notice how when he came around the baseline, the defense was not able to react. They stuck their leg out. You get that uh, knee right in the thigh. Now, you used to come here, Carl Shirkin, and watch a legendary team play here, the Philadelphia 76er. What player had a thigh uh, uh, Al break? Greer. And the reason he wore that is because he got kneed like that, and from that point on throughout his career, he wore that knee shield, which, uh, uh, knee, not knee, thigh shield, which prevented him from further getting damaged because that is a serious, serious situation. Let's not move on too quickly here. Now, I got the quiz right. What do I get? Well, you get to sit here with me and talk basketball. <laughs> Isn't that fun? <laughs> Isn't that funny, how, bud? How lucky are we both? <laughs> I didn't say both. 49.7 seconds remaining. 26 to 18. The score. Don Tom's no Let's take a look one you. more time. Did, you, did, did I call it correctly? Tell them what you saw. I saw a knee going into a thigh. Because when I you played pain, at North, right? when, when you played at Northeast High School for my coach, who became your coach, Ike the Willie. legendary Ike Willie, you were quick like that. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis on the past tense. He was here. slow. He was real slow. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then, you can't be talking about me being slow because I couldn't shoot. I know that. At least you I knew that. Set shot, did you? Did Pardon you have me? a twin set shot? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm not, I'm not as old as you. 49 seconds remaining. Oh, Ruben Palmer misses he, the first. He just threw the ball up there. He didn't wait. He didn't set himself. He's at the foul line with no confidence. And that's where young people have to practice the fundamentals. Makes the second. Edison within seven points. Token pressure here by Omar Logan. Ryan Moore comes out. Logan on Pierce, Moore now on Sims. They're going for the last shot. They recognize that they have the lead. Coach Ellaby wants to use all of the 25 seconds that are now remaining to see if he can't get the last shot. And they don't want to do what they did last time, take a shot with 15 seconds. You want to shoot within 10 seconds. Look how well they spread the floor, too. That's good. They have good spacing. Don't go for the... Oh, see? McKee. Bangs it off the glass. Kennedy there for the foul. Can't make it. And it's off Jared Kears. 2.4 seconds remaining for Edison. Down seven. Hard to believe. You don't want him to throw the ball the length of the floor and you commit a foul here. Oh. McKee should not have reached. He could have ended up with a foul there. Got to recognize time, clock, so that you don't get yourself in a gray area. When I said hard to believe, again, with all the things that have gone wrong for that man, Howie Ratnoff and his fighting owls of Edison, they still trail by only seven. We're joined now by Steve Kane, the University City High boys coach. And uh, a year ago, Steve was on this floor, and uh, you're a little more relaxed this year, I sus suspect. But uh, talk about, first off, talk about what went, what uh, your impressions of the first half, what you thought there? Well, I think Edison came out of the gate, really wound up tight. Uh, they made a lot of mistakes with the ball. They couldn't get their fast break going. And then on the other hand, Simon Gratz was getting the ball inside to their big men, and they were scoring pretty much at will inside. But uh, Edison played a lot tougher defense, and it still kept them in the ball game, which is where they are now, uh, seven points behind. Uh, quickly, if you're each coach, I'm going to put you in their position. If you're Bill Ellerby, are you happy with the way things are going, or what do you change? I'm not happy with the way my kids are going because we're in a lot of foul trouble. I think three guys have three fouls, and I have to sort of get my game plan changed a little bit and maybe try to get my guards some more shooting because his guards shoot so well, but they're not getting that outside shot. If I was Edison's coach, I would tell him if you're going to play man-to-man, -man, deny that inside pass and uh, play much tougher because they are doing a good job on their guards. You were telling me a moment ago that this is a very difficult game to play, and you were here last year. What was it like, especially coming down the stretch? It's nerve-wracking, the pressure. People don't realize the pressure of playing this game in this building. You get no chance to practice here. The shooting is very difficult, and, uh, of course, 
if you've never played on this floor, it's also difficult. And now you're on television, and it's even magnified even more. And take me down the stretch last year. You got Fat Smith at the line. He misses a free throw. Eric Hood throws up a wild one. Your heart had to be in your throat. I went into cardiac arrest about three times because the ball bounced on the rim three times. And, and just to show you, what coaching doesn't mean too much, the littlest guy on my team, my point guard, Amwar Blackman, came down with the big rebound and saved the game for us. Where and, were my big guys? And the, well, the big guys are carrying you off the floor. Well, it was a great feeling, I know. Yeah, those were my, all my players from 1986 who were in the championship against that Lionel Simmons team. We played at Temple, and we lost by two points on a disputed goaltending call. And the 86 guys to a man, they were all here, and they just picked me up. What a great feeling. There were about 50 of your past players there, weren't you? I mean, University City really does have a family feel about it. We have a great neighborhood in Mantua and up and down Lancaster Avenue. And the people that have come from that area have just been fantastic to our program. And that game meant so much to them, and uh, I was just excited for the whole community. And speaking of that, I know you're also very close to a lot of the girls' players for University City. Great accomplishment for them today. Uh, my daughters. I call them my daughters. They, Most of them have played volleyball for me for three years, and they're pretty good basketball players, but they learned a game of, basketball, of, of volleyball, and they led us. Our three-year record, I think, was 51 wins and six losses. And they, they didn't lose any games for Lurleen. I, I don't know if that's... Uh, yeah, they sort of let me you. down with those six losses. We were in the championship once, and we were beaten by Martin Luther King. That year we went 19-1, and one, but that, that was a tough one to swallow. All right. Uh, let me ask you finally, uh, the girls win. What was it like last year? The girls and the boys both won. What a celebration that was for you. Well, I, it was one big party from March all the way to June. We were invited everywhere. Mantua, the Mantua community people planned a big party for us. We were down at City Hall. The mayor gave us things. We had, I mean, these kids were all over the place. It was, what a feeling. All right, Steve Canyon, a man who loves his job. Coming up, more of the Dodge Halftime Report. Our score, Simon Gratz, 26, Thomas Edison, 19. We'll be right back. The best player in the public league last year took University City to a title. Rashid Brokenborough was the king of the hill. Today, he's a Prop 48 student awaiting his chance at Temple University. His progress isn't being measured on the court these days, but in the classroom, and he's making the most of his opportunity. He's a very, very special young man. He was so happy to get away from his neighborhood. He was so happy to get away from a community which is so downtrodden. To come to college, it was most unbelievable. I mean, he brought tears to my eyes, and when you even mention his name, uh, he's one of many that I've had that are very special kids. Sonny, the first time I heard those comments from Coach Cheney, I thought the people in that community might be a bit offended, but you had a little different take on it. No, uh, we recognize that our communities are not what they should be, and that young people like Rashid Brokenborough need to be exposed to something outside of their community. And even though he's moving from Mantua to uh, North Broad Street, it's a change. Mm -hmm. And there, he'll have an opportunity to be nurtured by someone like Coach Cheney the people at Temple University and the people that will embrace him. And it's just good to know that a young man like him respects the fact that he wants to go on and improve his life and he wants to use basketball as that vehicle. Taking 16 credits a that's, semester that's at a 2.9 grade point average the first semester. He wants to get it over a three before he gets eligible next year. He's going to go to summer school. So now he's in that environment. He's done an incredible job. And the other thing about it, he can take what he has learned mm -hmm. back to his community. Sure. And he can put his arms around the community at large, individual in the community, and say to them, there's another way. You don't have to stand on the corner. You don't have to drop out of school. You don't have to rob people. You don't have to look at life negative. Mm -hmm. You can look at life positive because I'm a proven example of it. Yes, I had a golden opportunity because I used basketball, but you can use your brain and you can use whatever it is that you have to make yourself the best person you can be. And now Rashid Brokenborough can, can lead by example. We're going to show you here on the Dodge Halftime Report some first-half highlights as the Gratz players got out to an early lead. And here we go. Our first look is Marvin O'Connor. Marvin O'Connor was able to get the Gratz team off early. He scored seven points in the first quarter. He had a couple of jump shots like that. And he also forced Coach Ratnoff to come out of the zone to go to man-to-man. -to -man, and eventually, Coach Ratnoff went back to a zone. But Marvin O'Connor got this team off. 
This is a, a lot of hustle on the part of both ball clubs. There's Just Campbell trying to get up and down the floor. Yes. And what you notice here is that Jared Kurtz takes a long jump shot. Now, Coach Ellaby was saying all the time, no, 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 great <laughs> shot, Jared. <laughs> well, here, here you can take a look at the statistics in this first half. A glaring one hits me right away. Edison just four of 20 from the field. Not much better from the free throw line. 11 of 22. Gratz, their normal in control kind of game, although that 10 for 28, not as good as they should be. 10 turnovers for Edison, nine for Gratz. It has been a little bit ragged. It'll likely be a lot better here in the but second half. But if I'm Coach Ratnoff, referred to affectionately as Rat, I say I'm only trailing by seven points, and we can't play any worse than we played. Mm -hmm. They shoot 11 exactly. for 22, missed the front end of a bonus along with that, mm -hmm. and they're in the ball game. If I'm Coach Ellaby, I'm saying to my ball club, don't you be all excited about what's going on because you're not playing good, solid Gratz basketball. You're really in front 26-19 because of the fact that uh, Edison turned the ball over 12 times, Edison shot 11 for 22, and Omar Logan, who you spoke about, Carl Shirkin, and said he's not playing the kind of ball that you've seen him play and that he's accustomed to playing. Well, let's see if he does it here in the second half. The players and the officials are back on the floor. Welcome back to the Civic Center. I'm Carl Chirkin along with Sonny Hill and that John Miller roaming the sidelines here. <laughs> We got another half of basketball to bring you, Simon Gratz, with that seven-point lead, Sonny. Forrest and Wise, numbers 33 and number five, went down for Edison with little injuries there. And I say little, emphasis on the word little, because they are both back and healthy. And, of course, we saw Terrence Smith go down twice early for Gratz. He, too, is back. All three of them looked okay to me. They all will start here, it appears in the second half. Well, what we want to look for in the start of the second half is from Edison, are they going to come out with uh, a toned down emotion? Mm -hmm. Are they going to come out and put a second and third pass? Are they going to be a little more under control and then let their defense create offense? For Gratz, what they want to do is to come out and continue to play the aggressive basketball they've played, did not shoot good in the first half, 10 for 28. They want to improve on that. You know, the key is right in front of us. They're about to inbound the ball. Number 21, Omar Logan, who had just an awful first half. He is their bona fide shooting star. Now we're getting that second and third pass. That's good coaching by Coach Ratnoff. Fabling. Albert Crockett didn't sell that one very well. He could have just continued to play, and maybe the official doesn't make that he, call. He looked at the referee and said, did I make a poo-poo? <laughs> they said, yes, you did. <laughs> O'Connor with the basketball to Kearse. Pitches it inside to Gosley. Back to O'Connor. As you see, Gratz very patient with the basketball here. Perry DiVirgilio had it knocked briefly away. Gratz maintains control, and they call walking on O'Connor. See, both ball clubs come out, settle their offense down, put some passes, and then all of a sudden that little emotionalism gets involved, and we see them travel with the ball. Both teams can play a good half-court game. Neither team really did much of that in the first half. Logan penetrates through two or three guys, pitches out, draws the 12th foul on Gratz in this ball game. I like what you said, pitches out. In the first half, Omar Logan was penetrating and looking to make his own individual move. So Coach Ratnoff has gotten to him and said, look, put the other guys in the offense. Wise puts it up softly, but can't get the roll. Off Gosley, Edison will maintain control. Don't forget in the first half, Edison did an excellent job of offensive rebounding, and it's carrying off to the beginning of the second half. Wise looks for Crockett and finds him at the point. Forrest back to Crockett and over to Wise again. Just underway here in the second half. Crockett impatient, lost to three with a man in his face. Smith gives it over to Kearse for Grants. Edison is back into its matchup zone, and uh, right now Grats is trying to figure out how to attack it. Mark Peterson gets a hand on it. Kearse gets it down. Yeah. 
Logan again out of control, but hits the bucket this what time. What do we see there? Coach Willie taught you this at Northeast. Give and go. He gave it. He went. He got it back. Field goal. Omar Logan's first basket of the game. Marvin O'Connor's second three of the game. He now has 10, so the first player in double figures is Marvin O'Connor. Had 29 last week against Frankfurt. The key to Marvin O'Connor's game is that he's got a tremendous jump shot. In case you weren't with us in the first half, this is the same Marvin O'Connor. Look at this. The shock troops coming in. Bill Ellerby obviously not pleased with what he sees on the court. He's getting them all out. What did we talk about earlier? In that first set, there was a confidence factor that was lacking. They were playing with emotion as opposed to playing with the steadiness that Coach Ellerby wanted. He comes in with five new players, sends a message to his guys. He's over there now on one knee teaching, and they will be back in the game shortly. Bill Ellerby is a math teacher at Gratz, and he told me he considers coaching just another class. It's not just basketball to him. He's teaching life lessons to these kids day in and day out. And if anybody's ever suffered through his coaching career, he said it was his own kids. The first so foul shot kids. is good by Crockett. That bodes well. Here's a nice move to the basket by Crockett. And again, forcing the defense to commit the foul. Misses the second, 31-22. Gratz with the lead in the basketball. Crockett, one for four from the free throw line. The opportunities have been there for Edison. They still trail by nine. Into Kennedy. He turns in, has the ball stolen. Crockett breaks out. To Wise. Along the baseline to Logan. Nice Three play. Men collapse nice on him. play by Logan. See what you have on the floor. Don't throw up just a shot. There it is. That's Logan the shot. for three. That's the shot. Got yes. it. Yes. Don't tell me. Do I know this game or do I know this game? <laughs> Kennedy now as Gratz breaks the pressure. Oh, and travel. Marvin O'Connor coming back into the ball game for Gratz, but still four of the five starters on the bench as Jared Kearse gets up as well. Marvin O'Connor, the junior star of this Gratz team. And I know Coach Ellerby, when he looks at this tape, will think star. No, he's not a star. He's just a guy who's scoring more. And what Ellerby, Coach Ellerby's concerned with right now, that last play by Omar Logan may light a fire on this ball club. Peterson misses in tight. O'Connor with the basketball, looks on the left wing. <laughs> Gary McKee has it stuck up there, but I think we've got a foul. Here's a nice fast break. Marvin O'Connor comes down the floor, takes off a little too early, but drops off a nice pass, and McKee, going to the basket strong, ends up being fouled. Well, you can see the score on that replay, 4.59 remaining. 31-25, this game is about to heat up, Sonny. Yeah, and foul shooting on both ball clubs has fallen off. And again, foul shooting is about repetition. Young players today don't go out and work on those fundamentals over and over and over. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the Gratz Bulldog. Just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> I'm a big mascot guy. 31-25, as Logan penetrates Puts it off the glass and down. That one shot for Logan now puts and gives him confidence, and he's playing under control. He can be a big factor in this ball game. O'Connor penetrates to Cooks. And Bill Ellerby continues to teach and coach, talking to Fat Smith over there, his big point guard, or one of the three or four guys he uses at the point. A six foot five inch kid with tremendous athletic ability. During the course of the season, he makes an awful lot of good decisions. Today, apparently, coach doesn't believe he is. Gratz breaks the pressure. Marvin O'Connor takes it to the teeth of the defense and then drops off a nice pass as the defense commits to him and Cook is at the foul line and Gratz needs to make some foul shots. Because if they don't, the same way that they were able to get the lead in the first half with Edison missing the foul shots, Edison will get back in the ball game in the second half with Gratz missing foul shot. Cooks makes one of two. He's probably the strongest player on the Gratz team. Has very big, strong hands. 
They're going to slow it down. Look for them to get it to him well, in the paint. He's related to one of the legendary high school players, Willie Cook, who went to South Philadelphia High School. So he's got a good bloodline when it comes to basketball. Wise penetrates. They call the foul on Marvin O'Connor. That's his third. Now, Carl, do you notice how Edison is now playing on the balls of their feet? They're attacking, whereas in the first half, they were playing on their heels. They weren't comfortable. Gratz now has a hesitancy about how they want to play. Crockett to Peterson in the paint for two more. Mark Peterson had eight at the half. Now he's in double figures. Long pass intended for O'Connor, knocked out of bounds by Peterson. 32-29, four minutes remaining in the third quarter. Gratz clinging to that lead. Edison on an 8-0 run, Sonny. Yeah, and that's the hesitancy I was talking about. Gratz makes an ill-advised pass from the baseline, three quarters. The ball's in the air too long. Defense has a chance to run under. Gratz is lucky to have the ball back. Pierce to McKee, back to Kearse and O'Connor for three. Make it four. The basket's good, plus the foul. That breaks the 8-0 run as Marvin O'Connor says, settle down, guys. I know I hit the three ball. The key to his game is the jump shot. He is a magnificent jump shooter, and the big thing about it is he has confidence. He does not have to fight the defense. Once they give him an opening from 20 feet to the basket, he can sit down on that shot, and he makes the foul shot. That's a four-point play. Marvin O'Connor now the leading scorer in the ball game with 14 points. Welcome back to the Civic Center. I'm Carl Chirk along with Sonny Hill. And take a look at number 11, Marvin O'Connor. Not only a great shooter, Sonny, but he's got a lot of poise and a lot of confidence every time well, out. the key was the shot was in the pass. And you see him celebrating because when the pass was made, he was getting his feet ready to be able to take the jump shot. Most young players, even college players and pro players, they get that pass. The first thing they want to do is fight the defense and take it to the basket. Why fight the defense when if you got a sweet jumper like Marvin O'Connor in his sweet, you say thank you and you celebrate. It is sweeter than anybody that Coach Ellerby has had at Gratz since Aaron McKee. And we know where That's he's good point. We know where he's playing yes. now. Aaron the had a NBA. sweet jump shot at, at Gratz. Again, the lead back to seven for Gratz. Notice the poise now that the Edison team is playing with. They're not fighting themselves. They've settled down, and Coach Ratnoff deserves credit for that. Logan pitches back to Wise, and then back to Logan for a three. Yes, two for two now in the second half from three-point land for Omar Logan. Completely under control, too. Completely, and again, the credit goes to the coach because he got him settled down. But Shatee Cooks gets behind the defense, has an easy layup to lead back up to six for Gratz. Well, Just see, under three remaining what, in the third. What Gratz did was, when it broke the press, it attacked the press. And that's what you should do. Crockett to Logan. Logan feels it now, Sonny. Well, he has instilled confidence not only himself, but his team. Yes. His team now is playing with the big C. That's confidence. His team needs him, and they've got him now. Satik Cooks puts it up there, an air ball. Scramble for the ball. The possession arrow pointing towards Gratz. That's Crockett and I believe Cooks at the bottom of that pile. I like it when I see the guys get on the floor. Let's see what happens here. The ball is loose. What do you do when there's a loose ball? Get on the floor and get the ball. Don't try to pick it up. Get on the floor, and that's what those two players did. Coach Ratnoff on the floor as well. As Gratz resets it deep into the backcourt. 2.25 remaining in the third. A four-point ball game now. Smith to Kearse for three. Kearse consistently does that. Waits, has the patience. They kicked it back out to him, and he keeps the Gratz team out front with a sweet three. Kearse and O'Connor are back, just in case you don't think Gratz will be next year. They are both juniors. The glass and in. Chance for a three-point play for Mark Peterson. What you have to like about, like about that play called Churchill, we're going to watch it on the replay, is the second pass 
Now we get the third pass. You fight the defense. They come to you. You drop it off. We didn't see that in the first half no. with Edison. We saw one pass at the most. Most of it was one on five. Again, I want to get back. Coach Howard Retnoff, great job getting his ball club to calm down in the second half. But frankly, I was a bit surprised that they were a bit out of control. They, they, they looked tremendous in the semifinals. They didn't look at all in awe of where they're playing. Fights Here they the, go again. Takes the ball to the teeth of the defense, draws the defense to him, and then drops off a nice pass to uh, Peterson. And Peterson, recognizing he was going to be fouled, throws it up on the glass, gets the sweet kiss, and he goes to the foul line. Peterson is uh, two, three field goals, six for six. He has 10 points. And don't forget, in the first half, when we go back, Peterson making four straight foul shots when his team did not shoot well. In fact, in the first half, his team only shot 11 for 25. He had four of the 11 makes, and that's all about instilling confidence. Mark Peterson, who transferred to Edison from Mass Bomb, likely have to go to prep school. He is a good kid, a kid whose study habits were lacking a little bit. Coach Ratnoff has nurtured him and brought him along. And, and one of the great things about these coaches too, these kids, when they're finished playing, these coaches don't forget about these kids. They get them into college, junior college. Coach Ellerby told me the thing he's most proud of as we see a three-point play the old-fashioned way is that each and every one of the kids who has played for him has graduated. And anybody who's wanted to go to college has gone to college. Now, Jared Kirst has brought the Edison team out of the zone. They're now playing man-to-man -man because they don't want to give up any more outside shots. Smith taking it to the hole hard, draws the foul. 140 remaining. Gratz up by four. I, I like the coaching that's going on on both sides. They're playing a chess match between the two. Coach Ratnoff realized that Jared Kirst and Marvin O'Connor have found a sweet spot in the zone as Fat Smith goes to the foul line. This is the first one. So he goes back to the man-to-man, -man, so he's not giving up that easy shot. Gratz recognized that, and they were able to get the ball inside. Smith got fouled. One of his best friends is Omar Logan. Those guys talk on the phone all the time. They, they've had a tremendous relationship for a long time. So. This That's is what a, it should be. It's a wonderful experience for both of them to be playing against said, each other. And they said, when we play against you, you don't wear my uniform, so you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put an old-fashioned licking on you. <laughs> 133 remaining in the third quarter. That's Marvin O'Connor's fourth foul as he Whoa. heads to the bench. Danger sign for Gretz. Put that up. 133. 30 remaining, five-point bolts for Gratz when Marvin O'Connor yes. hits to the bench with his fourth. That can be a huge key because he's been the guy to keep the Gratz team doing what he's been doing out there. Wise. That's Logan for three more. A little long. McKee with the rebound stolen by Forrest to Peterson. Mark Peterson there gets the pass in the paint, puts it up softly, and now once again, Edison within three, and the basketball, Crockett, oh. a hard foul by oh. Pierce. They call it an intentional, intentional foul. If Bill Ellerby disagrees, he's not saying anything. He's standing by his bench with his hands in his pockets. He's probably more concerned with the pass that was thrown away than the hard foul. He's sending his team a message. You threw the ball away. You made the mistake. You created the problem. And now Crockett, who made the first one, is going to get the second. And don't forget, Edison gets the ball out. So this could be a six-point play. Two, he makes the foul shot. Two that Gratz does not get, and four potential on this end. LB is sending a message to his play. Nice step into the passing lane by uh, Crockett, and again, taking it strong. He's foul, intentional. Edison within one, with one minute remaining here in the third. Fox Philadelphia happy to be a part of this Nike Public League Championship this afternoon, and it looks like it could go down the end. Albert Crockett with the jump shot just inside a minute to go. That's their first lead. The Fighting Owls 
of Thomas Edison High School are in the lead for the first time. And Crockett's got the rebound. They're going to hold it for one, or are they? Crockett leans in, rebound by Mark Peterson. Get a little frantic. Well, it's frantic <laughs> because you said Crockett thought he was going to hold it up. Then he said, well, let's attack the defense. Logan went to the basket out of control, but fortunately for him, Peterson was there to pick up the garbage. Great jump shot by Crockett. Crockett and Logan are on fire in the second half, and Peterson has been the consummate role player. He said, all I want to do is to pick up the garbage. You guys open them up outside. I'll take care of plenty of good business on the inside. Omar Logan goes to the bench. With 28 seconds remaining, get a little extra little Good break going into the third to fourth 28 quarter. seconds, he gets the time out, he gets the time in between, he can get about a three or four minute rest and then come back real strong in the fourth quarter. Watch Peterson's form, nice rotation, knees bent. He says it, not jinx it. Yeah, and that one was a little flat. 23 seconds remaining. Gratz down by two. Now what Gratz needs to do is to settle down, compose itself, and that's what Ellaby, Coach Ellaby was saying to them. Let's kind of calm down. Ryan Moore giving away about 10 inches to Jared Kears. The basket goes, but they call it offensive foul. So Kears saw the little guy on him. He had him isolated, wanted him, but they draw the offensive foul with seven seconds remaining. That's his third. Well, Jared Kears does not have the foot speed to be able to beat him defensive. We caught it short, but what happened when he made up his mind that he was going to go, the defense for Edison was able to slide over, take the floor away, and once he committed, he could not change offensive foul. Six seconds remaining. Wise finds Logan, penetrates on McKee. Offensive foul, Logan, with 1.6 remaining. Good defense on Gratz and Omar Logan committed himself too quick and could not make the adjustment. And there was time. And the referees were consistent. So both coaches cannot complain about the offensive foul. Jared Kearse with the desperation three-pointer as you hear the buzzer sound. Thomas Edison heads to the bench with a two-point lead. 44-42, we will come back. Welcome back to the Civic Center, getting set for what should be a classic fourth quarter. It's Edison by two, and between quarters, Gratz coach Bill Ellerby really let his team have it, chastised them for not playing as a team, for not listening to him. He said they've got to start passing the basketball, and they've got to start playing as one unit. Let's go over court side to Carl and Sonny. Thank you very much, John. Again, we'll reset it for you. 44-42, Edison who trailed most of the first three quarters down at the very last minute or so, got their first lead. This man, Omar Logan, heated up. So did Mark Peterson, each of them, 14 points. Marvin O'Connor, 14 points, but he's on the bench with four fouls, too. As Tyrone Forrest, with a great catch in the paint, puts it up off the glass, has a chance for a three-point play. Patience which is what helped Edison. This is a beautiful pass inside. Don't forget, Edison had the ball outside, moved it around for about 15, 20 seconds. Four or five guys touched it, and then they made a nice pass inside, and Forrest is trying to complete the three-point play. Mr. Foul shot. Great catch by Forrest, too. The key there. Good hand. Bill Ellerby sitting there watching his team falling apart the last couple of minutes. You know he gave him that lecture there. Prior to the fourth quarter, let's see if they respond. A turnover again. Now what's happening in the first half, the Gretz team was playing a lot more patient. Now in the second half, they're playing with emotion and they need to take the emotion out of the game, play with patience. Crockett, looked like it was deflected. This is Jared Kearse ahead of the break. Decides to pull it back and reset the offense. Campbell to McKee. Terrence Smith, 0 for 5 from the floor. Jetty Cooks, however, with the rebound, has a chance to shoot a couple of free throws now. 
and Carl Shirk. And we also want to let the viewing audience know that Marvin O'Connor, who has played very well for Gratz, has four fouls, and they're going to wait strategically for him to come back. Gratz with some nice patience finds Seth Smith at the foul line. That's normally his area, 15 feet and in, either with the jump shot or slashing to the basket. He was fouled. Foul shots are big. So Pete Cook misses the first. Gratz trails by four. Now this is what this is what hurt Edison in the first half, missing the foul shot. Cook makes the second. 46-43 Edison with the lead and the basketball. Omar Logan very patient at this point. Confident after hitting those three-pointers. David Wise has been running the point. He wasn't running the point early in the year. Harry Ratnoff's son, Eric, saw him at a tournament and said, why don't you let David run the point? He's done an excellent job. Once he was able to get his team to settle down, he's been the glue to keep everybody else together. Logan, watched by McKee. Logan a little out of control again. Seeing high school basketball, there is no 35-second clock. The players have to understand, that's Marvin O'Connor that we see on the well, bench. How long do you we wait know, before he comes back in? Six, you can, ten to well, go. Well, you can probably wait till about five minutes. Don't forget, you need him in the stretch. You need the confidence of him on the floor, and just him on the floor makes the defense respect him, so they'll step out further, open up some uh, lanes for other players. Rocket with a great move to get free. Great change of pace dribble. Slices through the paint. And he's in double figures now. Edison leads by five, 48-43. Now, how does Gratz attack this? Oh, see that Morgan, in that case. And that's bad. They've got to slow down. They've got to attack it with confidence. McKee for three. Draws iron and very little else, but Sims with the long rebound. And Gratz resets. Ronald Campbell. Rashim Sims taking the baseline. The foul on Mark Peterson. That's four on him now. Now see the two of the sturdiest players. Here's a nice pass. Sims makes a nice move. But he has that knee again. That's right. You come Peterson. out late. Yeah, go ahead. No, you come out late, you have nothing to do. The guy's past you. You're correct. And see what happens when you're shorter, you move quicker. When you're taller, you move slower. Recognizing that, you can make it work to your advantage. Sims did. Rasheem Sims shooting one and one. Nobody in the lanes to get the rebound as Coach Bill Ellerby talks uh, to his players, and it cost them. That's something they often do, perhaps to instill confidence in the shooter. No, that's a Coach John Chaney philosophy. Coach Ellerby is a believer in what Coach Chaney does. You don't. What are they trying to accomplish? You don't pick up an easy foul off the foul line with somebody going in early. You want to make sure you keep your players out of that nitpicking foul. Forrest pitches it back to Wise as Edison, very patient now. Gratz extends the defense. Forrest, fouled by Smith. In the case of Edison, they now are showing a lot of patience. In the case of Gratz, Smith that time, he steps out. There was no reason to reach in and foul, and that upsets Coach Ellerby as well, and he's going back to his bench to see what he can do and get a more uh, a sturdy ball player in there who will give him some nuts and bolts. Now you were writing things down when Marvin O'Connor went out, and he's still out with four fouls. 5.02 remaining. It was a five-point lead. Now a six. Every free throw, every foul now is two free throws for Edison. That's the double bonus. When Marvin O'Connor went out with 133, the score was 42-37. Gratz, since Marvin O'Connor been out, what has happened is Gratz has lost the lead. They've scored a total of one point in the last four minutes. 49-43, Edison leading Gratz. William Horton in the game for the first time. Number 20 misses down low. And Crockett to Wise now as Edison takes their time. Now this is where the three guards can really help Edison, although it's the turnover here now. Oh, they're going to get on the floor for it. What I was going to say was, they have a chance to spread the floor, 434 to go, Edison has the lead, you can make your three-guard offense really work for you in terms of decision-making and moving the ball. Howie Ratnoff continues to orchestrate things as Tommy DeFelice, the official on that side of the floor, 
sits him back down. 4.33 remaining. 49-43. Edison leading Gratz as Ratnoff wants him to spread the floor and they go to the weave. McKee on Logan. Gratz extends the defense. That's the three guards that I was talking about. Notice how they can operate now. I've known Coach Howie Ratnoff for more years and I'd like to think as you see Marvin O'Connor come back in. Howie, as you suggested earlier, did not play at Northeast High School as a kid. He did play baseball there and, and he was on the bowling team as well. Ooh. But we played in the same playground together and he is as competitive a guy as you will ever see. He's His done a kids great reflect job. reflect that. Done a great job with these youngsters. They were nervous. Pocket misses the first foul shot. But it was a good one. It was up on the rim. Right. It wasn't a shot that was taken erratically or you were nervous. Second one, very important. That one looked awful. <laughs> Ugly. <laughs> and we'll also walk back for Edison, the other way. Also for Edison, 1969, when Edison won the Public League Championship, they had some people by the name of Romy Thomas, Reggie Kitchen, Ruben Tuna Collins, Lynn Greer, some of those guys who went on to become very, very fine basketball players. You know, you know what you're doing? You're bringing back some bad memories. Is that you? I played against those. Ooh, guys. <laughs> Romy Thomas and Reggie Kitchen in the backcourt. They could do it. Yes, they could. They could do it. In 21 years, Howie Ratnoff has not been in this championship game. This is his first opportunity. Marvin O'Connor now with an opportunity for Gratz hits two. And he fired up as he goes back down exhorting his teammates to play defense. Let's see if he instills some confidence in his ball club and settles them down. Logan. That's your three guards. And Wise and Crockett split it up outside. The pass to Forrest. Referee Howard Wilson calls for travel. With the score, Edison 49, Gratz 45. Is that the expanded edition when you sit in that at uh, 11 at 10 o'clock? 10:30. That's the expanded yeah. action. It's bad. Well, you get about 15 minutes. Half hour. Oh, no, I mean you, you, you. Yeah, person. almost a half hour. Oh. Hard to believe, isn't it? Oh. Hard to believe. John Tolley's over saying, "I wish I had that in the old days." Well, pretty, pretty soon, Tolly will have two hours. I know he's going to be doing the morning over there. Hard news. Hard news. Easy bucket inside for Gratz. That's William Horton. A seldom used player, but Coach Ellerby said he's clutch and has been a couple times during the course of the year, and he's in there now. Logan breaks the pressure. Palmer reluctant. Palmer reluctant wow. to shoot. Got tied up. Wise was trying to call for a timeout, as you can see David Wise talking to his coach. And Coach Ellaby is upset because he felt that uh, Edison was trying to get a timeout. Crockett called timeout twice. The referees did not give him the timeout. Here's the play inside. We see the scramble. We see, oh, there's a the foul right there. And what happens, you just can't put your arms around the person who has the ball. Ruben Palmer. This is the free throw. Mark Peterson set to come back in. Likely will replace Palmer if he makes this free throw, which he does not. Tyrone Forrest fighting for the rebound, but losing the battle to William Horton. Gratz now within a bucket. O'Connor wants it. They called the foul out on the wing. Otherwise, they could have called the travel. The reason they call the foul on the wing call is that because Marvin O'Connor has shown that he can knock down the open shot, the defense runs to him. He realizes that the shot itself is a threat. You don't have to always shoot the right. shot. The fact that they know you can shoot it out there. Defense came to him, he penetrated, picks up the foul. Smart play by Marvin O'Connor. 308 remaining, Grax within two. Last time Marvin O'Connor was there, he hit two. This time, it's the front end of the one and one. As you can hear that sweet sound of those strings, could you? Love to hear that snap. This one's long. Don't like the thud, though. No. 
I like the snap, but I don't like the thud. <laughs> it's a one-point game now. Three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Wise being watched by Campbell. Now, see, if I'm Edison, I don't give the ball to the big guys unless they're right at the basket because both times they've given the ball to Forrest and Peterson, there's been panic. So the three guards for Edison should control the ball and only give it up when they need to give it to the big guy who's right there for the layup. Take a look at it one more time as Wise gets the ball in first to Logan, back to Wise as he penetrates and dishes. Pierce and O'Connor are both out on the court with four fouls, number three and number 11 for Gratz in the white uniform. As Marvin O'Connor goes up and gets the rebound. He's fouled, will shoot one and one at the other end. Now see, that's a characteristic of a big time high school basketball player. Not only did he come back in the ball game with four fouls, and instantly he started doing things to turn his ball club around, but all of the big plays have been around him. That tells you that you have an instinct for the game. You have a nose for the game. And for a junior in high school, this young man here is going to be a big-time uh, high school basketball player next year. We are now in the Super Bonus, so everybody's shooting two on every foul from this point on. 2.53 remaining here in regulation. Gratz trailing by two, now one. And they go back and pick up half-court pressure now. Let's take a look at how they spread the floor on offense. Oh, I don't want to stop your dribble right at half-court now. Horace got caught. O'Connor breaks out wide. Wise tried to stop him. That was not a flagrant foul, in my opinion. He tried to catch him. But they called a flagrant foul. I said in my opinion. I know, but I don't have a striped shirt. What happened blue. was Marvin O'Connor put a lot of pressure on Wise. Mm -hmm. Wise realized that he was retreating. He could never get his feet set to play defense exactly. or take the charge. So as uh, Marvin O'Connor, here it is right here. Notice Marvin O'Connor again, pressure. Never lets Wise get his feet set. Once Wise recognized that O'Connor had an angle, he then attacks him. But he goes Tackles for the ball. Him. He was on the ball. He was on the ball, but he tackled it. This is basketball. I understand that. That other sport that you played at Northeast, <laughs> that was okay. You played football up there. Did you play for Charlie Martin? I did. Okay. You were touched by two outstanding high school gentlemen, teachers, and coaches. So what happened to me? You're at Fox 29. <laughs> Martin O'Connor now. And you know the money is long. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll see you later, Sonny. <laughs> nice working with you. <laughs> Marvin O'Connor misses the first. Gratz still trailing by a point. He misses oh. both. Can't do that. And he's consoled by play. Arthur Dorsey. Here it is. One Mar more time. Marvin O'Connor attacks. The he's defense. on the ball. He's on the ball, but he's riding his but back. It, but it's a foul. It's not a flagrant foul, but that's a three-pointer. <laughs> O'Connor puts Gratz back up. 52-50 with 2.30 remaining. Logan answers. We're tied at 52. This is Philadelphia public high school basketball at its best, and the fans are into it. The emotionalism is in this building. Jared Kearse and Gratz decide to pull it out, and he throws it to a guy that's about six foot tall. Omar Logan pulls it back. Nice decision. Crockett wins the scramble, and he wants to set it up. 145 remaining. Banker doesn't go down. O'Connor's ahead of everybody. Leans in and scores. Gratz up two now, 54-52. Coach Ellaby is over there trying to tell him what defense he wants him to play. Forrest. And we're Both ball clubs.
nerves are drained right now emotionally and physically. This is when you need to settle them down and make sure you get a good shot. And Coach Ellaby recognizes that. He takes the timeout. Great timeout. And it's a good thing he did, at least from the Thomas Edison perspective, because David Wise at 5'9 was matched up in one-on-one -on -one coverage with the six foot four inch Marvin O'Connor. So it also gives Coach Ratnoff an opportunity now to reset his defense. And what you have to look at now is that both of these ball clubs are running on an empty tank, physically, emotionally, and mentally. So now your coaching becomes even more important. What you want to do offensively and defensively, you want to stay with your fundamentals. If I'm Coach Ratnoff, I'm saying to my ball club, we're going to play man-to-man. -man. If we get beat, we want the second line to step up. Here's the play by O'Connor. Beautiful pass by Jared Kurtz, and it's a great layup. Notice how he used his body to shield off the defensive player so he would get something out of it. And here's Forrest at the other end in the paint. Got himself a 13-footer, and we are tied. One minute, five seconds remaining here in regulation. The Fighting Owls of Edison and the Bulldogs of Gratz tied at 54. And what Coach Ellaby wants to do now is the same thing that Coach Latinoff is saying to his ball club on offensively. Let's do the fundamentals. Let's keep it simple. Let's pass the ball. Let's move it out of it. And let's not turn it over. Now those numbers would be good if we're talking field goal percentages, but that's from the free throw line. And that's why we are still tied at 54 all. There have been opportunities for, for both no reason teams. For that. Oh. That's just what I was talking about. You don't want to go for a steal. The score is 54 all, 102 in the ball game. Make them beat you through your defense. Don't give them a chance to get an easy basket or field goal or foul shot. Marvin O'Connor now with 24 points to lead all scores major player because he knows how to step up when the game is on the line. He is six for ten from the free throw line. And at least four straight here now in the closing minutes. Edison, just under a minute to go, down by two. Wise. The Crockett for three. Forrest with the rebound. Again, the iron. No. Peterson, yes. That's what you call, I won't be denied. Edison just fought and fought and fought to get that offensive rebound. Gratz should have gotten it, didn't get it. Now they've got a game on their hands. Third time at work. 19 seconds remaining. We're tied at 56 in regulation. Ronald Campbell. With the ball, looking over to his bench. He now, Coach the ball and Marvin O'Connor. There it is. That's where you want the ball. 6-4 on 5-9. Floats it up and in. With six tenths and a second to go. As you can see on the screen, there are still six tenths of a second to go. Bill Ellerby has gathered his kids back on the bench. Coach Ratnoff has taken his fighting owls back. O'Connor on the five foot nine inch David Wise. The help came late, Sonny. Well, the key is when the pass was made to Marvin O'Connor, he had enough time to be able to use his ability to put the ball on the floor. He went behind his back. He stepped into the front line of defense, was able to get past them before the second line of defense could step up and deny him the pitcher that he wanted to shoot the ball. He had the chance to get the ball off and hit nothing but net. And they have put back, according to my sometimes precise calculations, 
1.4 seconds added to those six tenths will give us two whole seconds left. Time enough for a long pass. You got to do it in one motion, though. You got to catch the ball, turn around, and shoot in one motion. That's what you have to do. And right now, they need to throw the ball the length of the floor to be able to execute call what you just said and that's going to be difficult but then the other thing you want to be concerned about if i'm coach uh Ellaby, i want to make sure that my ball club does not commit a foul you throw the long pass a crowd goes up one of your ball players inadvertently knocks down an edison player they go to the foul line so all that has to go into the equation of what is going on the math tied together i get it okay I get it. It's math was not my best subject, but I get it. Grant by two, Edison with the ball. Time out. Time out. Now, Edison was not able to get the play that they needed. The worst thing that Forrest did was that when he ran the baseline, he ran to the basket. The basket will be a deterrent. It would block Another a defender. long pass. So he needs to be aware of the fact that if he's going to run the baseline, start at the basket. Start at the basket and then run away from the basket so that you can make a nice overhand football pass that you learned from one of the outstanding coaches in the history of Philadelphia public football, Coach Charlie Martin. 58-56. Rats with that two-point lead. Edison with one more chance in regulation. Now, I don't know if I'm Coach Ellaby, if I want to attack up here or whether I want to put my players in a position where they can inbound the ball here and just throw it the length. They can get a situation here with all the players in the front court. Somebody can break up. See, he did it again. The key's on Logan. They count it. It's good. a nightmare for Kretz the second year in a row. We're not done yet, son. We got another overtime to play. Yeah, but the fact that you're going in overtime, you had the game locked up. Two seconds to go. And here you have a last second shot that goes up and it turns a dream of victory into a nightmare of overtime. 58-58. We are tied at the end of regulation. Let's look at it one more time. The pass intended for Omar Logan. It's free. As you can see, the clock wind down. Albert Crockett off the glass and down. It's good. And he got it off. He did. In time. And that was a great pass. And I just finished talking about why would you put all of your players in the front court and give them a chance to get a run out? I would have put my players in the back court and I would have put myself in a position where at least I could defend the long pass coming as opposed to running back and trying to defend that pass. Now, I do not see the Gratz team on the floor. <laughs> Crockett again, one more time. Albert Crockett sends this game into overtime, and you can see the Edison celebration pouring onto the court. Well, for Crockett and for the Edison High team, win it or lose it, this play will be etched in their mind Forever. for a lifetime. Forever. And well, it should be. Steve. Now, last year, you did the game last year. Yes, we did. Wasn't that a last-second shot? That won the ball game? We've had three great games. Right. We've had three great games. And on behalf of everybody here at Fox Philadelphia, once again, we are so proud to be a, a very small part of, of all the wonderful things that go on 
throughout the year in the public league. And for those people who say, why would you be televising public high basketball, you have to understand that the excitement and the drama that's involved as we see the replay again, and we don't have the clock inserted, but when the clock was inserted, the shot was off before the clock had gone off. The referee Tom DeFelice was waving his hands. I'm, I'm guessing he was waving his hands in that fashion because he was meaning to say it's, it counts if it goes. Yes. But it looks like Gratz took it to mean it was over because they're not on the floor. Both teams now are off the floor. Well, right now they're doing some maintenance to the floor. They've sent both teams off and uh, Again, it's 58-58, it appears we're gonna have regulation. In just a moment, there's some confusion a little bit on the court. Let's try and clear some things up. Let's go over to my colleague, John Miller. Thank you, Carl. Uh, very, obviously, very, very confusing. The basket is good. The Gratz coaching staff is furious. They think that the ball was not released before the clock expired or that the clock started a little bit slowly. I talked to Howard Ratnoff also, and he said that it was pretty much, believe it or not, how he drew it up. That's basically what he wanted. I don't know if he wanted the off-balance fall away. That's pretty much what Howard Ratnoff wanted. The Gratz coaching staff, meanwhile, very upset. They think something went wrong here in the final two seconds of this one. Let's go back to Carl and Sonny. Thank you very much, John. Well, Sonny, you know, we saw the play. We had the, the clock insert there, and we saw it winding down, and it looked to us that Crockett certainly did get it off before time expired. Well, we're going to see it again. There's the clock. Don't forget, it doesn't start. It doesn't start until it hits somebody's hand. There it is. Crockett has the ball. The clock's running down. At Away. seven, he gets the ball off, and when the buzzer sounds, it's a good field goal. Well, it's the field goal that has sent this game into overtime, tied at 58 all. Here at the Civic Center, I'm Carl Churkin along with Sonny Hill, John Miller along the sidelines, Don Tollefson and Bill Perry brought you the girls game earlier. Four hours, now four hours and 10 minutes of wall-to-wall -wall high school but, basketball. But the excitement, the excitement, the fans are into it, the players are into it, and uh, Coach Smigel, who is the assistant coach with Coach Ellaby, came out and asked us, Don Tollison, Carl Shirkin, and myself, did the replay show that it was a good shot? Well, and what clearly did you say, Don? It. it was good, because it got <laughs> off, as you said, Sonny, it got off with about 07, 06, certainly no double zeros. <laughs> Look at that little smile on Howie Ratnoff's face. He should have a smile. Well, He's done a tremendous job of adjusting to every challenge in this ball game. If we go back and recap what went on, his team came out early, very emotional, very erratical, uh, a, a team that just was not settled down. In the second half, mm -hmm. he got his ball club to understand, play with patience, play with poise, and put the second, third, and fourth pass, and in the third quarter, got back into the ball game. Now you see Tommy D. Felice. he was the official who was right on the play there. Tommy, a heck of a player in high school, I believe, at West Catholic, and then he went on to play baseball and football at Temple. He was right on the play. There's John Koskinen. He's in charge of boys basketball with the Philadelphia Public League. Bill Ellerby still needs to be convinced yes. that that ball was away. Well, well put yourself the, the clock? in the Coach clock Ellerby's replay? position. Is the clock on the replay? Two seconds to go. Clock on Let's the take a little listen. Let's listen in. I heard the horn. You heard a short one, you said. It was a that. short horn. I hear that. The horn went off. The call was good. Come on, we got to play. Well, you can hear Bill Ellerby say he heard the horn and Bill Ellerby is coming over here with his assistant coach Nate Schmeagle. Bill Ellerby as you can see him walk across the court he's going to take a look at it as well. Sunny Hill it mediates this discussion here. You want to take a look at it? You guys need me? Coach Ellerby says we'll take a look at it. If we can, we can take a look at it, guys in the truck. 
Coach just, Ellerby joined us. I can understand Coach Ellerby's uh, feeling. Let me tell you what, you had the ball game in the conference, and all of a sudden the miracle play. So I know what it's all about. Let's all right, take a Coach, look at it. Let's take a look. No, go back. You need to go back. Coach Ellerby is saying. You can see the end. You yeah, can see yeah, it is in fact a way. Yeah, we're going to go back. They'll go back. The, from the beginning. See if the clock started when it we're going to do it from the hand. beginning. They're going to go back and get the beginning. The pass intended for Omar Logan, the key on defense. We'll take another look at it as we requeue that, Coach. But it appeared that your guys were caught Here up it is. a little bit. Here it is. Clock does not start. There's one man. Check it. Check it. Clock hasn't started. There's a hit. There's a hit. Look at the clock. Look at the clock. It's hit again. The clock did not start. When he's the right. Ball was he's right. Well, perhaps right. a split right. second. The ball the ball but that's the, human error if, in fact, it was. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to overtime. 58 all. Keep him calm. That ball out of bounds. He called timeout. I can this score, and I saw one point. They did. They put the, no, they put it 1.4. What was your math? There was six. There was six tenths of a second left to go. Yes. They put 1.4 back, a total of two seconds. Yeah, but when he called the timeout underneath the basket, look at the clock. It was 1.4. We would not have that clock. So you can't go back and give him two seconds. That's not. That's, that's in the game official's hands. That is not us. Don't check it. I said you guys may have it. They don't want to use it. We would, but we wouldn't have it on the tape. I don't believe we would have that on the tape. Sure you do. Don't you have? When they took the ball out of bounds, no. he called timeout. You don't have that? That I was at two minutes at that point. <laughs> it was at two. That's when it was at two. Coach Ratnoff wants to get in as well. When he shot with him, when he caught the ball, called Coach, Coach Ratnoff just asked if he was invited. <laughs> Uh, no, you haven't been invited to his party. <laughs> Here's the there play you can again. see, it's two That's seconds two left. Seconds. I think what what the Gratz coaching staff is questioning, Sonny, is was there, in fact, 0.6 seconds when they hand him and they put it on. Now, I, no. That's confusing to me. There was two, yeah, I thought I did. There were two full seconds. Why they, in fact, put that 1.4 back is still a mystery to us. We don't know that, but that's not our business. But the, it clearly was two seconds left when the ball was inbounded. Yes, and what Coach Ellaby is saying is that when the ball was thrown inbounds, the clock wasn't hit instantly. Exactly. You used a good terminology. That is a human error. Yeah. And right. it was only a split yeah. second. Split second. So whether that shot would have gotten off in that time, and don't forget that when, when Crockett shot the ball, mm -hmm. There was seven seconds, not seven seconds, seven, seven tenths. tenths of a second. Right. So when he shot the ball, seven tenths. So it still would have been enough time. So even if the clock had not been hit, he still would have had enough time. I believe it would have been. We're going to have overtime in here in just a minute at the Civic Center. 58 all. We're tied at the end of regulation. Now let's go back to my friend and colleague, John Miller, courtside. All right. All right, Carl. We may or may not have overtime. Coach Bill Ellerby has just gone back to the Gratz locker room. He says the game is over because the clock started a little bit late there at the tail end, and he's going to leave it up to his team whether or not they come back on the floor. It's very much a mystery at this point. In fact, I can see up in the alley right now that Bill Ellerby and John Koskinen from the school district are talking about this. Koskinen very obviously trying to convince him to come out and play, but Bill Ellerby is not a happy man, and he is leaving it up to his team, his players, whether or not they want to come back onto this floor and finish out this game they say it's already finished at least the coach does back to Carl and Sonny well that says something about Bill Ellerby because he's leaving it up to his team and they are a team and they are a family but I would certainly like to see them come out here they should be out here to take this game to its logical conclusion yeah I think that for the betterment of Philadelphia public high basketball we've had a great opportunity and I've had the privilege to be able to be a part of this telecast. Mm -hmm. This is a tremendous way for the Philadelphia Public School to market its product. Not basketball, right. but young people who are doing something positive. As you can see in the tunnel, here they come now. The Bulldogs of Simon Gratz are now back on the floor. We're gonna have overtime here at the Civic Center. Tied at 58 at the end of regulation. We'll stay right here. We're about ready to get started again, Sonny. There's Bill Ellerby. As you see, he comes out like a political candidate coming through those Gratz Bulldogs cheering. Now, what we want to be concerned about as we get back into the ballgame, which team 
is going to be flow. drained the most mentally and which team is going to have the emotion that it's going to take because see all that drains both ball clubs you on a grass is on a real low and uh edison is on a big high right. so now what both coaches are going to be able to do to get their ball clubs balanced because that's what you're going to need now you need them balanced you don't need them too high you don't need them too low you've got to have them balanced well, they've got to maintain that balanced performance. We've seen both teams here, too, in the course of the afternoon, Sonny, down and able to fight back. Emotionally down, physically down, but yet they've come back each time to the point where we are now. Four-minute overtime here at the Civic Center. The fighting owls of Edison already on the floor. There's John Koskinen explaining what happened to Howie Ratnoff. We are about to start once again, so we'll sit back down here, just like everybody else in the yeah. Civic Center. We were up and watching and listening. And Bill Ellerby's kids are back. Keep in mind, foul trouble here. Kearson O'Connor with four. I believe Peterson has four as well. And everything Edison. carries over, so the bonus on both sides carries over. off Marvin O'Connor. Edison takes over just three ticks of the clock here into the overtime. I want to see how both clubs deal with it offensively and defensively. Edison looks like it's going back to what was comfortable. Presses into a man-to-man. -man. Now notice Crockett and Logan are the guys at the point, not David Wise, who's been running it most of the game. Crockett, change of pace, dribble. The Forest and back to Crockett. Crockett to Peterson, and he's fouled by Jared Kearse. And he's got his fifth foul, and that is the limit for Jared Kearse. And that's going to hurt Gratz tremendously because Jared has been one of the stable players for Gratz throughout this ball game. And with him going off, it's going to be tough to fill that spot. Probably have to come with Smith, who's been uh, sitting down. He's a starter, so no. probably will come with Smith. But that's the beauty, again, and we can't oversell the competition in the in the public league and the camaraderie. Here you had Albert Crockett going over to Jared Kearse and congratulating him there at the end. So it was a nice pass, and then uh, Peterson takes the ball to the basket very strong, and that's where Jared Kearse steps in, reaches, Picks up his fifth foul. Peterson, eight of nine from the free throw line. Perhaps the best on either team today. It's not necessarily an inopportune time to take that foul. Even though Kears has to go down now, there are people to come and take his place rather than give up an easy layup. Well, you're right there. You don't want to give up an easy basket. You want to make sure that you can go to the line and earn it. Here's Smith. He's coming in as Jarrett Kears uh, uh, fouled out. Mark Peterson to shoot two. He's got the first. Now, what you want to look at for both ball clubs, you saw Edison come down, run its offense, get something out of it, and want to see how Gretz is going to execute on the offense. Pierce gives up the foul. Peterson hits both. He's 10 of 11 from the free throw line. He leads all scorers for Edison with 18 points. And Edison is into man-to-man -man defense. Quick jump shot up and in by O'Connor. That's a three. So now Gretz takes a one-point lead with 3-10 remaining. See, Crockett wasn't ready. He tried to beat the uh, picks that were set up. He should have been on Marvin earlier because Marvin has carried the Gratz team throughout the latter part of the fourth quarter. Now Wise at the point. Pulls up and hits the jumper. Almost a bit premature on my part, but it goes down as it rattles in. 62-61. Edison comes down, has the patience to run his offense. That has to match him. Marvin O'Connor has the ball. Now you have Crockett on O'Connor as he tries to draw the free, the foul. He misses. And Forrest with the rebound. 62-61. Edison with the lead and the basketball. Gets over the half-court line. Wise running the show from the point. Penetrates. Puts it up. 
David Wise glides. The Edison lead grows to three. Every time down, Edison has been able to get something out of their offense. O'Connor picks up the offensive rebound, gets it off the glass and down. Kratz has to get somebody else to help out on offense. O'Connor can't just keep carrying the Gretz team. They need a secondary player. Edison has second and third players that are helping them. Tired as he is, Marvin O'Connor. Now he's all scores with 32 as wide. This is the three, and that's O'Connor on the breakout. <laughs> 34 points for Marvin O'Connor. 124 remaining as Crockett splits the defense to Peterson. As Coach Ellerby and everybody wearing those red and white Gratz uniforms cannot believe themselves. And that was a beautiful penetration and a drop off pass. And even though the foul may have been questionable, you have to give Peterson credit because what he did, he took the ball to the rack strong. And when you do that, you give the referee a clear definition. Nice breakaway. Marvin O'Connor shows great foot speed, able to beat Wise, who's shorter, and shows great ups, particularly late in the ball game in overtime. Here's a nice pass by Crockett. Good block. Good block. But what happened was Peterson took it to the basket strong, and the referees rewarded him. The foul on Arthur Dorsey. Arthur Dorsey is now out with five fouls, as well as Jared Kearse. 119 remaining. Peterson who is 10 of 11 from the free throw line, now with a chance to put Edison back in front. And don't forget, Peterson has shot fouls extremely well in this ball game. So he's going to the foul line with a lot of confidence. 4, 65, 64, Gretz leading, 119, big foul shot. And makes the first, we're tied. He's got superb confidence in what he's doing. Arthur Doisy, no points, three rebounds, five free, five fouls on Arthur Doisy. Peterson now 11 of 12 from the free throw line, make that 12 of 13. More importantly, Edison now with a one-point lead. Peterson's not even hitting the rims, nothing but string mute moves. Campbell looking inside to Curran Smith, knocked away by Logan, two on one breakout. by three. Gretz doesn't have to pump or force anything. Take your time. A lot of time. A lot of time. 50 seconds to go. 68, We're getting into it. I just knocked Sonny in the nose. That's all right. I can take it. <laughs> I can take it. Time out. Wise with six points thus far in overtime. Edison's trying to get a time out. 38 seconds remaining. 37.3. The Fighting Owls call timeout. On that previous trip down the floor, McKee saw the only man he had to beat was Mark Peterson. Peterson has four fouls, so he let him go. What I didn't want to see Gratz do was panic with about 50-some seconds to go. There was enough time with the score 68-65 to get a two-point play, to get a foul shot, or for three came within the context of what you're doing to get your three off. They took the opportunity to play under control. McKee, as you said, Carl Shurkin, made a nice move to the basket. Now, 37 seconds, score 68-67. That's what we're looking at. They now we have Crockett a... with the ball. They're in a breakout situation. Odd man rush, as they say in hockey, a two-on-one. And Wise puts it up, off the glass, gets the roll on the rim, changes, that's his opposite hand. Tantalizing. Looks like it's coming off. But the Edison guy says it looks like it's going. <laughs> the Gratz side to say it looks like it's coming off. But the Edison guy's won because it went. <laughs> Nobody's won this one yet, though. 37.3 seconds left. Edison with the basketball and that one-point lead. Don't forget, inbounding the ball is difficult in any ball right now. Crockett. Woo! With Smith all over him. Bill Ellerby can't believe that call either. They call the foul on Gratz. 31.2 seconds remaining. 
It looked like there was a walk right there with Crockett. He couldn't get his feet together. He certainly had they trouble handling. Logan with two big foul shots. Don't forget, Logan has not shot good fouls in this ball game. Two for four. Oh, straight to the basket. Now, 31 seconds to go, 31.2. Gretz down by two. If he makes it, Gretz still has enough time to get a two-point play and then go down the other end and play some defense and get another shot. Marvin O'Connor in the lane early, and they call it. Marvin O'Connor could not maintain his balance under the basket and clearly in the lane early. Bill Hillary can't catch a break today, oh, can Oh, yeah. Now, look at Rat. What he's going right. to do, he's going to do the John Cheney Temple thing. He's going to take all his players off the uh, foul line so that he does not get anybody that gets in early. He also has a setup where they can play defense so that they're not back paddling. When the, when the offensive grats comes, they're right there to play the defense. Omar Logan, three of six from the line. It's a two-point game. You don't need a three now. Just get a full timeout. 69-67, 24.3 seconds remaining in overtime. Omar Logan, just two points at the end of the first half, has scored 15 since that time, but could not hit the second part of those two free throw opportunities he just had. Well, that's where the foul shooting again comes back and bites the Edison team. Don't forget in the first half, Edison shot uh, 11 for 21 at the foul line. If they had made their foul shots in the first half, instead of being down seven, they could have been much closer. Here, critical foul shots. Go to the line. Logan, their primetime player, makes the first one, misses the second. He's three for six in this ball game from the foul line. Tommy DeFelice, one of three officials here today who have been involved in an extraordinary basketball game. We're now in overtime. No guarantees it's going to be over in the time remaining. 24.3 seconds left. The fans of both teams eager to carry their players off the floor for the Public League Championship. We're going to have to watch and see who does it. Well, what Gratz does not want to be in a situation. They don't need a three. If they get it, that's fine. You want to get something going to the basket, putting pressure on the defense. Logan on O'Connor. Great play. It was Logan covering O'Connor. Now, it's a double bonus. Quickly it's now, let's bonus. go to John Miller, courtside. John? Carl and Sonny, that play was designed to go to Marvin O'Connor. They wanted to get to him out of a 3-1 set. Never happened because of the foul. So we'll have to do it from the line. Back to Carl and Sonny. He will shoot two. 17.7 seconds remaining. That one looked like it slipped out of his hand. You still have enough time. You can make it. You can play defense. Foul around this end. Send Edison to the foul line. Gretz gets the ball back. Makes the second. Full court pressure by Edison. That's Crockett over the half court got line. He's, he's, got, a he's got a layup. There's your foul, but a they long foul. time after it should have happened. The ball was right there. They should have fouled. Absolutely. It was about 14 seconds to go. You should have taken the foul shot. Take them out of the game from that point. That was Kari McKee on defense shadowing him down the whole way. He's only a sophomore. See, Marvin O'Connor couldn't take the foul because he had four fouls. Exactly. Here it is right here. Oh, no, that's the give and go. This is the finish. Peterson puts it up and in plus the foul. 10.6 seconds remaining. Edison by three. Now four. Peterson in his foul shooting. All the difference in the world. O'Connor rattles it out. 2.3 seconds left. And Peterson with the rebound. Marvin O'Connor fouls out of the ball game. With a very hard foul at the end. Sonny. What we want to see now is sportsmanship prevail between the two ball clubs. We don't need a situation where we have an ugly incident 
because right. the game has spoken volumes for the public school system of Philadelphia, the kind of basketball that's played here, and the kind of young men that have participated up to this point. Well, to this point, the effort and the sportsmanship have been absolutely exemplary. You know, the emotions at this point certainly have, a, have an opportunity at, at times to, to take over just a little bit. But both Gratz and Edison, the team and their coaches and administration should be very proud to have participated in this wonderful Nike Public League Championship game here today. We're going to have to get out kind of quickly. I would be remiss if I did not, I think, echo the sentiments of a lot of people throughout the Public League. After 21 years as a head coach, Howie Ratnoff, it would appear, finally has won his first championship at Edison. Howard Ratnoff did a tremendous job of adjusting to every situation. Coach Bill Ellaby did a tremendous job of adjusting to the fouls and the fact that he lost some key players. The thing is, the game played out. The better team on this day won. And if there had to be a player on Edison that would be the MVP, he's at the foul line right now. Peterson shooting those fouls, doing the nuts and bolts things, has played a tremendous game for Edison. How about Mark Peterson? 15 of 16 from the free throw line. not the final four it's not the nba championship but to these kids to these schools it means just as much if not more sonny the final score edison in overtime has beaten gratz 74 to 68. Welcome back to the Civic Center. I'm Carl Turk, and along with Sonny Hill, John Miller is in the midst of a great sea of humanity out at midcourt. Edison has won its first Public League Boys Championship since 1969. They did it in overtime by beating Gratz. Sonny, at the start of the afternoon, I said we'd have four hours of wall-to-wall -wall basketball. I misrepresented things. We're talking four and three quarters. So good. We needed extra time. Well, not only that, but the enthusiasm and the way that both of these teams played, it speaks volumes for Philadelphia Public High Basketball. You know, Big House Gaines, who was the former coach at Winston-Salem University, Coach Earl Monroe, Cleo Hill, some of those people, uh, Reverend George Gibson right here in the city of Philadelphia, he said the best basketball in the country when he was recruiting all over was Philadelphia Public High Basketball. Well, those sentiments have been echoed many times by many people. Now let's show into the midst of everything that's going on and bring in our colleague John Miller with the Nike player of the game. John? All right, Carl, thank you very much. Mark Cooper from Nike here to present the player of the game trophy to Mark Peterson. Do we have Mark here somewhere? Yes, Mark deserves it. He's been swept away, but Mark Peterson is our Nike player of the game. Let's talk to John Koskinen from the uh, school district to present the trophy to head coach Howard Ratnow. Congratulations. A long time since Edison has been there. That trophy goes back to 1912 when Central High won it. Your name will be inscribed this year. Congratulations. Well deserved. Good luck. Somebody, thank you, Linda. Somebody said that we won it last in 69. Turn the year around. 96. Came true. It's unbelievable. Uh, Howard, it looked like you had two different teams out there. First half, your team very skittish, but you really settled them down at halftime. We've been behind in a lot of important games early this year, but we usually shoot fouls well, and this was incredibly poor in the first half. We didn't shoot fouls that much better in the second half, but these guys, they never quit. They never quit all year, and I'm so proud of them. All right, Edison pulls off the upset, and the big reason is Mark Peterson, and we have Mark Cooper from Nike, and I know you want to say a couple of words about Peterson's performance. John, we saw a great game here today. Guys from Edison, guys from Simon Grass deserve all the credit. Mike is just happy to be a part of it. Uh, through our play program, we try to participate in the lives of America's youth, and we saw a game today. We sure did. We saw bonus coverage, as they say. Back to Carl Churkin and Sonny Hill, and we'll find Mark and give him this trophy, I promise. Thank you very much, guys. Nice to see that smile on Howie Ratnoff's face. The opposite side of that coin is Bill Ellerby, who's done such a great job that Gratz has to go home without a trophy today. Yeah, but let's look at it from the other side. This is the eighth straight year that Gratz has been to the finals. Let's look at it from the point that Gratz 
as most of these players are returning, particularly Marvin uh, O'Connor and Jerry Kurse. So he's got a great team to build on. Let's look at some of those final stats that are up there. That's the Independence Blue Cross Pennsylvania Blue Shield final statistics. Neither team shooting particularly well, although Edison coming on strong in the second half. They got their poise. They got control. 47% field goal. I'll tell you what, a whole lot of people in the NBA would like to shoot 47%. <laughs> but if you really want to see the difference in the ball game, it's free throws for right. Edison. They shot 48 to Gratz's 27. They made 26, and that's a key. Well, there are an awful lot of keys here today, Sonny. But once again, all of us here at Fox Philadelphia are very pleased and proud to be a part, a very small part, of Public League Basketball once again. Our third straight year, the tradition continues, and we'll be back next year as well.